Hello there, I'm Mark Wolf, and welcome to Hair from a Craft Hard Rock. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is nearly a five hour long video. What I decided to do was take all eight episodes I've made so far, put them together into one mega video. And well, this could be a good resource for all of you for Tear from a Craft Hard Rock. I have over 60 chapters in this video, so you can jump around and look for specific items you need to look up. How do you make iron? How do you find kaolite? So on and so forth. All of it, well, hopefully to be helpful to you. <laughs> this is my first time doing a mega episode. If you'd like to see more, let me know. If, if it's popular enough, maybe I can go back and make one, make a series of them for series from a craft and for vintage story. But otherwise, yeah. This is going to cover everything from loading into the game to getting iron. Because I always forget to do this in my first episode, I'll include on screen the coordinates to my current base and the world seed. So you can come and play along if you'd like. Additionally, I have a discord. Feel free to come and join us there. Likewise, if you have questions specifically about Terraformcraft Hard Rock, there's a Hard Rock discord. Link is in the description and I'll See about putting a little link on the screen also. Go check them out. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy. And I'll catch you later. Hello there. I'm Mark Wolf and welcome to Terraformacraft Hard Rock. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So, Terraformacraft Hard Rock. This is a hardcore mod pack for Terraformacraft on Minecraft 1.18.2. It changed a lot of recipes and functions of Terraformacraft. And so, well, hopefully I can teach you some of the differences. One of the things that doesn't change is we need to pick up rocks to get started. And sticks and twigs. Twigs and sticks are interchangeable. You just need to craft them in your crafting grid. And we are already being attacked by a spider. Excellent. And because my legs took damage, I now am slower. Welcome to Hard Rock. All right, so first, first things first, we need to make ourselves some tools. Okay, first things first, we need to get away from wherever these spiders are spawning. Because now both my legs are damaged. All right, well, I had to just go find some food to get me to stop well, with the pounding heart in the face. So, uh, I just picked some tomatoes. Which means I kind of skipped something I wanted to show you. If we go down to this, this is our nutrition bars. As we eat, each of these categories will go up or down based on what we eat. I just ate two tomatoes. So our vegetables, because tomatoes are vegetables in Terraform Craft, our veggies went up, but everything else went down. When these five categories are full, we will be at max health. Anywhere less, we are all, well, less than max health. Okay, so we can move now. We're not dying. Let's actually get started. I need to make some tools. First, we're going to make a stone axe. And if we switch over to this, we can actually store items in this hot bar over here. We also have this hotbar here. This is our utility hotbar. We can access that by pressing our F key, just like um, it's our offhand. But I've also hotkeyed the plus button on the number pad to cycle between the four slots. They're called utility slots in the configs. All right, so we have our knife. Um, sorry, we have our stone axe. Now we make some knives and I want to make a shovel. To make these stone tools, we need at least two rocks. Now that I'm down to one, I can no longer nap them. You need two in your hand, and by right-clicking them... Let's uh, pick this one up. By right-clicking them, you open up the napping screen. And by clicking, you chip away at the rocks until you wind up with the item you want. I just made extra knives I didn't need. And because there are plenty of rocks everywhere, we're just going to throw those on the ground. We don't need them. 
I am going to pick up more of these tomatoes because we will absolutely need more food. Now, next to the food bar, which is the green bar, you see a blue bar. That is my thirst. That has dropped a lot since I started playing uh, five minutes ago. <laughs> so we need to find ourselves some fresh water. It looks like there's fresh water to the north of us. So we're going to be heading over there. While we go, we keep an eye out for other food items like this grain over here. But we also need to start looking for clay. In hard rock, our inventory is locked. It means we have very limited inventory space, so we need to make the most of it. The best way to do that early game is getting our hands on clay so we can make vessels to carry extra items in. And this is wheat and that is rye, so I do not want to be carrying two different types of grain that just wastes space. All right, here's some fresh water. You can tell it's fresh water because it's got lily pads and it's got different plants that grow in it. Fragmite? Oh, well, I got nausea. In Hard Rock, drinking fresh water can still make you sick. As you can see from my screen now, uh, this is actually the the uh, Minecraft nausea potion effect, which they removed because it causes motion sickness. I have it disabled because I don't get motion sickness, but people watching this could. So we just get this very ugly green hue on our screen instead. The way to avoid getting sick from water is, of course, you boil the water or you make purified water, which is going to require charcoal, which we don't have access to right now. If you see marigolds, duckweed, Arrowheads, these are all indicative of fresh water. It's safe to drink. All right, so we have some basic tools. Uh, let's go over this quest book quickly. We open it up. It tells us how to, well, recraft the books we have. And it gives us important steps. I have this hot keyed to the button above my tab, the uh, tilde button. So we actually do not need that book to access our quests. So I'm going to leave it there. It's a waste of inventory space. Something we really can't afford to be wasting. Oh, this is rather lucky. We actually found some clay. Peravoska is one of three different plants that grow on top of clay. Others are golden, golden rod, and a type of fern. I don't remember its name at the moment. I'll show a picture of it on screen. And if you see those plants, that means there's clay. We need to dig up this clay so we can start making pottery. Just like stones, you nap it by right clicking and it opens up this napping screen. You need five clay per item you want to nap. So we're going to make a large vessel. Did not mean to throw it. Then we're going to want two small vessels. We're going to want a jug, which will allow us to carry water on us. And I'm also going to make a bowl while we're at it. We can use the bowl to make salads and soups in the future, which give us more nutrition options. And it's getting dark, so let's start making our first pit kiln. Well, we're actually going to make two of them. Place your clay items in the kilns, in the holes you dug. You place them in on the ground by pressing V while looking at the ground. You should also note that pit kilns are very good at starting with forest fires. So make sure you clear the area around the kilns so that you don't have to deal with forest fires. We're going to need eight straw per pit kiln. And then we're going to need 16 lumber, uh, eight each. So we're going to chop down this tree. In Terra Firma Craft, when you chop down a tree, you chop down the whole tree, not one log at a time. So this is going to take a long time, especially since we're using a stone axe. But when it's done, we'll get all 17 logs. I should also know in Terra Firma Craft, normally stone tools, you'll lose about 30% of the yield of the tree. I actually have not noticed that in hard rock. 
Yeah, we just got all the logs. So that may be a change to hard rock or it might be a change because I believe hard rock uses dynamic trees. Either way, it's good to know. And uh, because we're going to be good stewards of the forest, let's just replant these trees so that when we come back over here in the future, we have trees. Not that I plan on coming back here in the future. We've got our two pit kilns ready to fire. We need to make a fire starter. Do that with two twigs. Shift, right click on the pit kiln. It will eventually light. Uh, because they are next to each other and fire spreads, now they are both on fire. So that's uh, useful for saving a little bit of time. If you look at the pit kilns with your jade tooltips on, you'll see that there's actually a timer. That's how long till the pit kiln is done. So we're going to stick around here for another eight minutes. So while we're waiting here, we should look at making ourselves a few more items. Uh, first and foremost, let's make some more inventory space. I'm going to want five straw. Again, we get straw by cutting grass and we're going to make a string and a canvas. And if we combine the canvas, the string and a stick, we get an unlit torch. We place it on the ground, grab our fire starter again. I should be able to get that just by scrolling. Shift right click, hold it down. Now we have a lit torch. I can put down my offhand and we have dynamic lighting. So the torch will stay lit. All right, you may have noticed it is nighttime. We are not being attacked by mobs by default. Hostile mobs do not spawn on the surface in terraformer craft. They only spawn in caves. So we should be safe for a while. I say that and I immediately hear zombies in the cave underneath us. And since I saw this, I might as well pick him up. We have some bismithonite here. Bismithonite is an ore that we can use to make bismuth bronze. We also need to find copper and oh, I think it's zinc for bismuth bronze. So we might not actually ever get a chance to use this bismuth right now, but we should definitely mark on the map that there's bismuth here so that in the future we can come back here and uh, maybe mine out the area looking for more. If we go into the caves under us, we might actually be able to see Bithmith deposits in the walls. However, I don't feel like dealing with creepers, zombies, skeletons, all that right now. Since the only tools we have on us is a axe and a knife <laughs> and no armor. All right, well, I'm going to wait here for these to be done and then we'll move on to the next step. I should note that when you build your pit kilns, all four blocks surrounding it must be full blocks. You can't use slabs. You can't use stairs. You can't use path blocks. They have to be full blocks. Otherwise, you won't be able to actually make and light the kiln. But we got about a minute. Well, we got a little less than a minute left. And then we'll get our first vessels and our jug. The jug we can use, like I said, to pick up water and carry it with us so that, well, we're away from water for a little while. We at least have some on us. I just saw some more. This mythonite. And uh, the vessels are. Well, we're going to need the vessels to make alloys and tools in the future. For now, they will serve as a good storage medium because any food kept in a vessel actually lasts longer. Let's just uh, put those down. Pick this up. All right, so here's our first vessel. I'm going to just toss that stuff in there for now. We can seal it and pick it up by punching it. And it is now day two. And because we have the barrels 2012 mod in this mod pack, we can actually wear this vessel as a backpack. Just saves a bit more space. Let's grab our jug, our two vessels are too hot at the moment to open and our bowl here. If we shift right click the bowl, we open up our salad menu here. We could put vegetables, 
and uh, make ourselves some food. This will actually give us a lot of veggies if we did. Can we put grain? We cannot put grain in a salad. Still too hot to open. Well, let's go down here. Well, this water can still make us sick. But we're going to need at least a little bit of it. I want to start heading south. If we look at our climate here, it says that we are in a temperate area, but the average temperature is 1.7 degrees. That's cold. It's going to stay cold year round. <laughs> if we go to our Terraformer Craft Guidebook and look at the advanced mechanics here, we can scroll down to crops. And you can look at all the different crops you can grow in the game and you'll see they have temperature ranges negative 8 to 26 degrees celsius 3 to 40 degrees celsius if it's too cold the crops won't grow and they will die so i want to get somewhere closer to around 10 degrees celsius as an average temperature that's uh roughly what it is where i live kind of used to it and it's where i usually settle in terraformer craft it gives you a nice range. You get all the seasons, but you also don't have to worry about. Um, uh, well, I think pretty much every crop, save one or two fruit trees, grow in that climate with no problem. Uh, fruit trees, by the way, they will fruit during the correct time of year. We can harvest cuttings from fruit trees, but we need to use an axe to cut them. And there's no point doing that right now. And do be mindful of ravines. There are a lot of them in Terraformer Craft. If you fall down one, you will not have a good day. I think we've backtracked. Uh, maybe not. And as we're going around, I want to keep an eye out for more. Oh, uh, my vessel's cooled down, so I can open these now. But as we're traveling around, I want to keep an eye out for more ores on the ground. Now, the good thing about vessels is any food stored in a vessel actually get a longer shelf life. So tomatoes have five days in the vessel, they're up to 11. So you definitely want to use your vessels to store food. Likewise, the vessel we have on our back, if any food was stored in there, they would have an even longer shelf life than the vessels that we're carrying in our hands. And we just got knocked out by a snake. Two shot. Now we got to accept our fate and respawn without any of our stuff. This tells me where I died. Uh, so let's actually grab another stick, uh, not a stick, another rock or two, and make a javelin. Javelins are a type of spear. You can stab with it, or you can throw it like a trident in vanilla Minecraft. Uh, but when you throw it, it does take more durability damage. So, you know, just worth knowing. You can throw it a few times and it'll break. If you stab with it, it'll last a bit longer, but it does more damage when you throw it. So there are benefits actually. I won't be doing that. I should probably just make a second one for now. Boy, we did not make it that far on our first day, did we? All right, well, we got a corpse there. And we hit our corpse. The early game is not forgiving if you make a mistake. And no, we cannot climb up on the leaves. You actually walk right through leaves. So, uh, can't, we can't hide on the leaves to attack the snake from above. Oh, and every time you die, it reduces your nutrition. So, it's going to reduce our overall max health whenever that happens. Oh boy, he has a lot of health. Well, I seem to have lost him, so that's a good thing. We can actually get our stuff back. All right, well, we've wasted the bad part of a day being attacked by a... There's another one. By a snake. We 
Can't tell if it's still behind me. <sighs> okay, well. Oh! Well, that's fortuitous. It chased me right to some Cassiterite. Cassiterite is tin, and that's what we need to make bronze. Still don't have copper yet, but we're definitely going to need a lot of tin. So I'm going to look around here and hopefully find more than just that one little bit. Okay, there's a decent amount of tin over here. This is, this is good. Tin needs to, uh, well, tin bronze, or just bronze in general, needs to be 10%, well, 8 to 12% technically, of tin. 10% is the easiest ratio to go with because you just need two nuggets. And uh, we just got 14 nuggets of tin, meaning we have enough to technically make seven ingots of bronze once we have enough copper to do so. We don't have any copper right now. Oh, there's more tin. Wow. Okay, we're doing really good. Um, we don't have any copper now, so that's going to be our next task. We need to get clay. I have clay in my backpack, don't I? No, I don't. Okay, we need to find some clay. So we can then make a sifting pan. And while we're at, we'll probably also want to make a pot too. And then we can see about making ourselves a sifter. We can start getting ourselves some copper. And then we can start making ourselves some copper tools. And thankfully, we can actually just use this gravel in here to sift for copper. Here we go. Found some golden rods and some more provolska, which means there should be clay under here. Yep, there we go. Let's put these down for a moment. We did find a bit more bismuth. No, bismuth and night. So let's dig this up. And we'll get started on our next few items. So let's just gather up a bunch of clay here. We're going to need at least 10 because we want to make a pot and a sifting pan. Now, you know, we might as well gather as much as we can so we don't have to keep looking for clay after we're done. Okay, let's start with the pot. That's this plus those two. And then the sifting pan was that sort of shape. All right. Put the pan. We put them both in. So, you know what? If we're going to do that, we might as well fire up another large, uh, small vessel while we're at it. No need to waste the time that we're burning stuff. And uh, that's why you want to make sure it's clear around the pit kiln. It will start fires. Okay. Uh, while we're here, we might as well make ourselves a hat. A straw hat. This will help insulate us against the temperature. At least it'll help insulate us against the sun. I also caught a rabbit. So we're going to put that down. And taking our knife, we can cut it. Get its hide, its meat, and also uh, sometimes a rabbit foot. Looks like we didn't get one this time. But now we have a bit of rabbit meat. We can make a campfire or a fire pit as opposed to the pit kiln. So these are a little more tricky because in this mod pack, you can actually right click the pickup items from far away. And you need to hold right click on the fire starter to start the pit, the fire pit. So you want to shift and aim away and then sort of bring it over. And that still does happen. You need one log and three sticks. You can put straw down also. It doesn't always help. But there we go. Now we have a fire pit. We can cook our food on it. 
We're gonna cook this chicken. Sorry, cook the rabbit. There we go. And when the fire pit is done, we'll be able to put the pot that we just made in there on top of the fire pit. And that's how we would cook things like stew. And then we can take some cabbage I found, the tomatoes I got before, and the rabbit. Put those all in the salad together. And that will at least give us two nutrition types. And also a bit more thirst, although we're going to need a drink from the lake again. By the time we didn't get sick. It looks like we can make boiled water by boiling some rocks in water. And uh, the boiled water should be safe to drink. So we might look at doing that in a little bit once our pit is done. Okay, everything is done. Can't use the vessel yet. We're just going to place it on the ground. I never tried this. Can I pick up? I cannot pick up a pot of water in the pot. So let's just put that there. Then we can very slowly because the uh, jug only holds a tenth of a liter. Fill this up with one liter of water. And then the recipe said two stones. We toss these in here with the water. And a few sticks. Uh, we should be able to boil the water. And make it safe to drink. So let's get that going. See if that actually works. I'll just toss that away. You know what? We might need one of these logs. I need to hold on to the other log though. Because we're going to need to make some molds in a minute. In older versions of Terra from a craft. You could sift any gravel and get a chance of getting gold, copper, and silver. In modern terraform craft, you can only get that from native ore deposits. This mod pack has the ore washing mod, which allows you to collect gold, copper, silver from any gravel deposit. So we're gonna be sifting this gravel to get some copper. There, we just picked up some copper powder. Five millibuckets. You need 100 millibuckets to make an ingot. So we need 20 of these copper powder to make an ingot of copper. Or because we do have some tin, we need 18 bits of copper powder, which is 90 millibuckets, and we can make bronze instead. Okay, that never boiled. So I clearly misunderstood those instructions. And you need to stand in the water in order to sift the gravel. We have enough copper and enough cassiterite now. So let's make our first two tools. We're gonna do a saw blade mold. There we go. Toss that in. And then we're going to want to do a pick. One of the easier molds. And then what we're going to do is open this vessel, put our copper in and our cassiterite. So this is, yes, that's the correct amount of copper. So that's 80, that's 80, that's 20. So that's 180 millibuckets of copper. 20 millibuckets of tin, that'll give us 200 millibuckets or two ingots worth of bronze. So now we need to grab ourselves some more grass. Put our logs back in and spend a whole nother night waiting for our stuff to fire. But when this is done, we'll have two ingots worth of bronze that we can pour into our pick and our saw mold. We can then, using the saw mold, actually start making some useful items like a crafting bench and a sluice, which will allow us to sift, well, not sift, sluice, all of this gravel automatically. We won't have to do it by hand. And we're just boiling ourselves some soup while we wait for, well, the pit kiln literally just finished as I was saying that. And so this actually is very time sensitive. So. Let's uh, get rid of a few things in our inventory that is cluttering up space. We want to grab both of those molds, open the vessel. You see how hot it is. We need to click the molds into the vessel and they will start filling up. So that is our saw made and this is going to be our pick. There we go. Now the vessel is still too hot. We can't put anything back in there. 
But once these molds cool down, we can pull the ingots out of them, not the ingots, sorry, the tools out of them and use those. It has three servings. So I can take one serving now, eat that. Do a second serving. And have a third for the go. Well, a third for on the go. These have cooled down enough. We stick them in. We can pull the item out. Sometimes the molds break, sometimes they don't. Usually they break. And uh, this is now cool, cool enough that we can use it again for items. Do that. And that. We can stick this there. Now we have a saw. Awesome. We need the saw to make lumber. So we need to do something different here. We need to place a ash log down, grab our axe and right click twice to turn it into a chopping block. We can then put a log on the chopping block and click it three times. And that'll turn it into supports. Now we need these supports if we are caving. I'll cover that in the future. But what we can do with these supports now, put them in our crafting grid with our saw and turn them into lumber. For lumber makes a plank. We're going to need four planks and then we can make a workbench. And there we go. We now have our crafting bench, our workbench. We can finally start crafting full size recipe items. We want to make next a sluice, which is going to be three lumber and three sticks. So we're going to need to do this again. And we have three sticks, so we just do that. Plus that gives us a sluice, which we can then using our shovel clear a bit of a path here. We want the water to come in, turn, and right where the water terminates. And our shovel broke. That's where the water terminates. So now we dig down again. We need a two block wide spot for the sluice to go in, but it needs to be even lower than where the water terminates. Then we can place the sluice and then we're not quite done yet. We need to dig out a one deep hole at the end of the sluice. All right, and so now we have this piece of gravel. If we toss it here, it will feed into the sluice and it will process. It processed pretty quick and it will give us the, uh, the same results as panning with the pan over there. So if I just dig up some more gravel, we can toss it in. And get more uh, if we actually get gravel instead of flint we will get more copper dust which we can then turn into more tools the good thing about this is it is automated so you can just toss it on the ground leave it if you have hoppers it'll take a while to get them you can automatically pick up whatever is being sluiced wow that was extremely unlucky we got no copper? Yeah, we got no copper. All right, well. I'm going to pick up all these, all this, because this is not our final base location. But at least now you can see how all this is done. Well, I guess that's as good as place as any to stop. Uh, next time, we're going to go look at building materials and try to find ourselves a place to live. And uh, actually set up shop and save this little whatever this is. Until then, thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Later. Hello there. Welcome back to Terra Permacraft Hard Rock. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So we've traveled a little further south. We still have very far south to travel, but we did find this villager hut. Villagers are in Hard Rock and this one here, he's a miner, so I can trade him gems for, well, cinnabar, which is redstone. Graphite, which we're going to need for, well, quite a few things. We needed to make gunpowder, but we also needed to make fire clay. 
We're going to need fire clay to make fire clay bricks, which we need for our blast furnace, which we need to make steel. That is, of course, assuming the process hasn't been changed in hard rock compared to terraforma craft. But he also has this thatch bed so we can click on it. And it does say this bed is too uncomfortable to sleep in, but spawn set. So now if we die, we'll respawn here instead of honestly not that far away up here. But we have our spawn set. I would show you how these thatch beds work, but if I pick it up, I don't have a hoe. It uh, it's gone. We lose it. But what you do is you get a large hide and you right click it onto two thatch blocks. Thatch blocks are, of course, made by combining straw just like this. And so you put the two, the two thatch blocks down, you right click the hide on and voila, you have a bed. So we're not going to be able to get much use out of this guy, but at least we have a spawn set and we still have to travel a very far distance. I am still in a region which is average temperature of 2.2 degrees Celsius. And we are looking for, well, about 10. We're going to keep exploring. But it was brought up in my last episode, and I think I should mention it, that there are three types of bronze. You have bismuth bronze, which is made with bismuth, zinc, and copper. Regular bronze, which is copper and tin. And black bronze, which is gold, silver, and copper. Aside from just looking different, each of the different types of bronze have slightly different stats. Bismuth bronze has the worst durability. Black bronze has the best durability on tools. On armor, bismuth bronze actually offers better protection against crushing damage, whereas black bronze offers better protection against piercing, and regular bronze is a split between the two. Because there are three different damage types in terraforma craft. Crushing, which you will do with a hammer or mace, and you'll receive that from unarmed zombies. You have piercing, which, as you can imagine, is bone arrow and a javelin and knife, I believe. And those will be if you get attacked by skeletons with bows or with spears, that counts as piercing. And I think spiders also count as piercing. And then you have slashing, which is your sword and your axe. And those will, of course, be done by any mo hostile mob carrying a sword or axe. And I am marking on the map where all these deposits are, even though I might not be back up here. Because once we have ourselves a permanent base, I can show you how prospecting works. Since there is a little bit of confusion how to properly triangulate using the prospector's pick. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Well, it's taken quite a few days, but I think I found a decent spot. It's not quite as warm as I was looking for. I was saying around 10 C. We're at 7.6 C. But if we look at the area, we've got some nice forests, both to the north and south. We have a river so I can make use of water wheels and create water power. But we also have access to the ocean, which means exploration should be pretty easy. Looks like there's a delta over here so we can get up this river if we want to explore to the north can't quite go east over here although i can always terraform a bit and create a canal so i can travel to the east likewise it looks like to the south there are waterway connections to the ocean so we could always take that as well so i think this is going to be a very good spot also uh, aside from the piranhas in the water there don't appear to be any Hostile mobs over here. And we've got hematite. We've got copper over there. We've got some zinc up there. So that takes care of our, well, next few tiers. We also have some food I saw there. Copper. Copper. We're going to be going up this river. We can find a lot of resources. I have. First off, you want to see how far I traveled? Yeah. So we did travel all the way down here, about a thousand blocks south. And over here, it's closer to 10 C, but I don't like the marshy terrain. We started way up around here, which is over 5,000 blocks away. So we've traveled pretty far, but we found a lot of stuff in the process. So we're going to be good on finding resources. At least I think we will be. Anyway, now that we've done this, 
I'm going to go start setting up. I am going to need to be filling in these areas. So I'm going to be terraforming in the future. Not necessary right now. We're just going to be building a starter hut probably next to this villager hut up here. This also gives us plenty of flat land. Don't have to worry about farming too much, uh, terraforming in order to farm. And then we can look at, well, first off, the resources we need to build a house. And also we can look at setting up our forge, the charcoal forge. See, that's some iron right there, hematite. So we've got an iron deposit real close to base. That's going to be very, very useful, very convenient in the future. We have a Siba setting up a charcoal forge so we don't have to keep making a pit kiln in order to cast ingots and also, you know, just make everything. We can make ourselves our stone anvil so we can start working on our copper anvil so we can then work on a bronze anvil because you need each subsequent anvil in order to make the next one. So yeah, um, it's going to take a little time to dig out and clear everything up. So I'm just going to start putting stuff down and getting to work. Oh, I should show you what we picked up along the way. Quite a bit of phalarite, so we can make some bismuth bronze with that. We got plenty of cassiterite. Oh, I should take... I should take some of these things out before I uh, put them down. That down there. Place that. That's good enough. So plenty of tin. In here, we even got some more gold and some... Food, I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to put them into our big vessel in a minute because the big vessel will allow us to store these food for longer. Six days unsealed, 12 days sealed. So that's much better. <laughs> oh, um, hmm. I'm going to need to make a knife and cut away the barley so it lasts longer. A chest. Uh, we need... Okay, I need to put one of those down. I need to grab us... A few stones so I can make a stone axe because my other one broke. All right, let's make this a chopping block so I can. The plan right now is I'm going to turn this into some planks or oh, some lumber. And then from the lumber, I should be able to make them into a chest, provided the recipe hasn't been changed for hard rock. Nope, recipes have not been changed. All right, so now we have a chest we can place down. And chests in Terraforma Craft only have two rows. It is double chest, so it's got four. The thing is chests also have size restrictions. So logs, very large. They do not fit in chests. To store logs, shift click them on the ground. You make a log pile. Then if you click on it, you can see what's stored inside. We're going to need a bunch of logs so we can make a charcoal pit to make charcoal. That's going to be important because we need the charcoal in order to drink, uh, to make purified water so we don't keep getting sick. But small things, stones, our ceramic jug, those can all go into a large chest. Uh, actually, I think. Yep, most of these things can actually go in. The vessels can also. Not tools, tools are too big. And do not store food in a chest because rodents can get into the chest and take your food on you. So, yeah, don't do that. Now, if we were to store tools, first off, you can store one tool on the ground at a time, but we would need to make a tool rack, which actually tool racks are pretty easy. I think I need uh, three locks to make a tool rack. Oh, no. Well, we made more than we needed. Do this, do that. That gives you a tool rack. Put that there, and then we can store up to four tools on the rack. And it doesn't take up extra space. You just click them off and on. All right. So like I said, I'm going to 
start leveling out and start getting resources I need, and then we will get started on building a starter house. I've gotten a few resources together, so let's go over some early game building materials. The easiest one is to make mud if you didn't find some on the ground. If you look in areas like up here, the lowlands, this is all mud. So you can feel free to collect this and use that to build out of. I made a bucket here, a water bucket. It's very simple, three pieces of lumber in a V-shape like you were making a bowl in vanilla that gives you a wooden bucket. The important thing about these buckets are while they can carry, well, one bucket of fluid, uh, they do not create source blocks. So you cannot create an infinite water source with a wooden bucket. You need to get a steel bucket, which is going to take us quite a long time. But what we can do is we take the bucket, we go over to our workbench here, put that there, and then we can fill this up with dirt and I'll turn it into mud. Once we have mud, we can either make wet mud bricks or we can make Dob. I'm going to make a little bit of both just to show you. All right, so the wet mud bricks, we place these down on the ground. We place them in groups of four and they need time to dry. If it rains, it resets their timer. As you see, it's going to take one day for them to dry. So we're going to leave those there and just let them dry. The other thing we can do is now we've made daub, we can take two logs, stack them on top of each other to make wattle. We can place these down. They do stack. However, they are affected by gravity. So if you break one, all of them attached to it will fall. As is, I usually put rocks at the bottom, uh, cobblestone. Also, it looks nicer. So you put your wattle down. Then you have to take sticks and you see how that changed. It takes four sticks to weave the waddle. And now that that's done, first off, we can't go through these anymore. Whereas if I do these, we can walk right through them. All right, so this makes them a solid block so you can actually use it for building walls. You can then apply your waddle to it, change the texture a little bit, but if I make white dye, I can then apply the white dye to the unstained wattle and give it different colors. So you can have, so you can apply pretty much any of the dye colors to the wattle to, you know, vary up the color. Maybe you want to do something a little different. So that's wattle. Those are bricks. Once they're dry, you put the four in your crafting grid and it'll give you one block per four bricks. So that's not going to be many bricks, but at least they'll give us something. I actually really hate the sound of walking on these bricks, so I never use them. Well, I'll use them in the walls. I will not use them in floors anymore because they're just, yeah, they don't sound nice. So that's two of your early build options. You could always take straw, do a thatch block. But the problem with these thatch blocks is, and you've probably noticed it with the villager houses, they have no collision, so you can walk right through them. They make decent roofs, but you definitely don't want them as your... Uh, walls because they're not going to actually offer you any protection. Next, we have our quest book. So the first quest you have tells you to find to um, take your Akashic Tome and turn it into the tear from a craft book. To do that, right click and you can look through and this one here is a tear from a craft book. You do that. Now you have the same book you can access from your inventory screen. Right there. This way you have it in the world. You don't have to switch menus to find it, but this has most of the information you need for Terra Firmacraft. And to reset it, just left click and it turns back into your Kashuk Tome. So now we can start looking at some of these other quests for this one, health and stamina. More health, more stamina. To increase your health and stamina, eat a variety of food because we have the Spice of Life mod. Spice of Life, wait a sec. Yeah, Spice of Life. Uh, I'm not going crazy. This I think that's the correct mod, which as you eat, you will gain additional hearts. So I actually just gained an extra heart. You see, I have three and one empty one because I was eating some food to recover my health. This tells you five, 10, 30, 60, so on and so forth. 
You also have a new health system, Control H, to access it. This shows you your health in each section. Actually, this is a tutorial. Walks you through how the first aid mod works. Because each of our body parts has health. As you can see on our little clay doll down here in the bottom, my head is red, my torso and arms are yellow, but my one foot and my one leg are green. That means that my health is lower in that spot. So here's our current health. Body's at one, head's at one out of two, left arm and left leg are two and a half out of, sorry, one half out of two. So if we go back to our quest book, we can complete this having read that and we will collect well, bandages and first aid bandage. I didn't want to collect these earlier because I did not, I did not have the inventory space for it. But now we can apply these bandages to our body, and it will speed up the healing process. Next quest, just tells you how to change the shaders. I've got it set to the one that's default in the mod, which is the complementary shaders mod. We can just click that, complete that, and the next quest for now is survive. And this goes over a lot of what I mentioned in the first episode. Uh, also includes information on how to make leather. So I'm going to go over this. I'm going to skip it, really. I will be covering it myself. For on other threats, we've we discovered this the hard way with the snakes. Uh, there are other animals, hippos, bears, tigers, lions, panthers, spiders. The spiders are a pain in the butt. So we, we know about those. They're all dangerous. And then we have weather. We can get tornadoes in this mod. So you're going to want to be careful what you build out of. Uh, dirt is not affected by tornadoes, but dirt is affected by gravity. Planks, trees, uh... Maybe not logs, but leaves, they're all affected. So if you have a tornado come through, it will pick up segments of your house and destroy them. But we also get blizzards, I believe, with this mod. So that should be fun. And click this. That, that just tells us how to change the keybind, which I already did in the first episode. And now we have a whole ton of mods unlocked for us to look at. How to get water, summer, mobs, climate. A lot of these are stuff I've already started going over. Transportation, inventory items. And the first steps for making tools. So wants us to make our Kashuk Tome, the Terra Firmacraft book again. Tells us to pick up rocks and, you know, starts teaching us how to nap. So let's just grab these, grab some sticks. We've already got a stone knife, make a stone axe, shovel, spear, collect straw. Right, you get the idea. So I'm going to be completing a bunch of these ones that we've already gone over just in the process of surviving. So, you know, I'm not showing you every single little step along the way. And then we'll get back. Uh, these are dry, those are still drying, so we can break these four. Oh, so we can break those, turn it into sandy loam, place the bricks down. And there we go. Now we've got some bricks that we can build on. And now I'm going to work on just building a very basic home for now. All right, so we cannot place these bottle over an open space. I grab one from here. If I click, it won't go. So we need to place something there instead. I'm going to be placing, well, I'm going to place a door on the bottom. So we need six lumber for that. That gives us two doors. Now, Waddle can't go on top of the, oh, now mind, it can go on top of the door. So there you go. Now these Waddle blocks, the ones without the daub applied to them, if you break them, it drops the waddle and the sticks. But if you break one of these unstained waddle, it drops the whole thing as one block. So you turn it into waddle, you apply the daub to it, and then you can move stuff around without worrying too much about it. So that's the very 
<laughs> very bad start to a house. Don't worry, we'll all make something much better later on. This is really just, uh, uh, well, getting our feet wet. And then we'll add a roof at a later point. Hi there, Future Arc Wolf here. I've recorded a full segment on charcoal, the charcoal forge, the stone anvil next to me. I hated all of it. So we're going to do this again. You need charcoal to make your charcoal forge in order to start melting down resources so that you start so that you can start casting them into molds and then working them on an anvil. Yeah, so it's fairly easy, although it might seem like a lot for the charcoal forge. You need five stone blocks. I use cobblestone, but you can also use stone bricks to make a well, make this shape where it's one on the bottom and then four on the sides. You then take seven charcoal then you click them into the slot in the middle of the forge. Once you have seven, you can grab your fire starter. Shift right click and hold. And now it's lit. Now you have a charcoal forge. These slots here is where your charcoal will go to feed your forge. These slots are for whatever you are melting. You can put vessels in here. In fact, that is a good way to alloy early on. These slots here are sort of a buffer. If you melt copper or anything in any of these slots, you need to have something over here to catch the melted metal. If you don't have anything over here, you lose it. So always make sure if you're forging something, you have at least a vessel over here to catch the metal. Also, if you're melting two metals at a time, I don't recommend it. If they mix and they're not supposed to mix, you will wind up with an unknown alloy, which is useless. To make charcoal, you need a charcoal pit. So I've got a one by two hole dug here. We're going to shift right click a log onto the ground. This makes a log pile. Do it again. It'll put all the logs into the pile. Right clicking on the pile will open up this screen. I'm going to do it twice here. So we have 32 logs in this pile. We then want to put dirt on top after we light it. You can use a torch. If you throw a torch onto it, it will eventually light. It might take up to um, uh, 30 seconds or so. If you use a fire starter, you just hold and click, same as you do every other time. And then immediately cover it with something. In this case, we're using dirt. We now see smoke particles coming out. That means the charcoal or the wood logs are burning into charcoal. This will take you about 16 hours. And when it's done, you will have charcoal. 16 logs will turn into about seven or eight charcoal. So we put 32 logs in. We should get 14, 15. Very rarely will you get a full 16, a full eight from a pile. It does happen occasionally. It's not likely to happen though. So that's our charcoal going. Here's our charcoal forge. Our stone anvil. When we want to make this, we need to take the raw stone that we collected earlier and place them in a row like this. You then right click with your hammer on the middle block, this one here, and it will turn into a anvil block. We can then click on it, open up the anvil screen. We can store our hammer in here with the stone anvil. You cannot use plans to create any tools. The only thing the stone anvil is really good for is taking copper ingots and welding them together into double ingots, which you then need to make your copper anvil. So here's your copper ingots, your double copper ingots in the shape to give you an anvil. And then once you have this, you can start using it to make copper tools and also to weld bronze into a into bronze double ingots, which you need then to make bronze anvil. You can only forge tools on the same tier or below the tier of the anvil. So a copper anvil can only make copper tools. A bronze anvil can make bronze or copper. A red steel or blue steel can make anything. But 
you can weld the ingots from the next tier up on the lower tier anvil. So again, the copper anvil, we can weld bronze. On the bronze anvil, we can weld iron. On the iron, we can weld steel, etc. To weld, we are going to need flux. We need to heat up the ingots until they say can weld. It'll be near the point where they it'll be near their melting point. So you have to be careful with that. You need two of them at that temperature. You place them onto the anvil. You take your hammer in your offhand. You shift right click and they will wield. I'll show you that when we get to it. You also need flux. We get flux from crushing certain stones, chalk, marble, lime, but also shells, seashells, that sort of thing. So we're going to have to keep an eye out for those. I collected quite a bit of copper here. So we are going to try to make a bronze tool. All right. So if we put 14 copper powder in, no, 12 copper powder in for bismuthinite and for cephalorite for zinc, this will give us one ingots worth of bismuth bronze when it's done. We put that right there. Let's take our chisel mold mold. I'm going to need the chisel in a minute. So we're going to store that there. We then grab some of our charcoal from here and we can shift click it in and it'll automatically feed in where it needs to go. There we go. Now it's heating. The more stuff in a vessel, the slower it will take the heat up. Once it reaches its full temperature, the temperature at which everything melts, it will mix together, alloy into bismuth bronze, and then we can cast it out in the chisel, just like we would if we were trying to cast it or make it in a pit kiln. This is quicker. It does take uh, charcoal fuel as opposed to wood and thatch, but it's better. As you see, the charcoal is burning down. As it burns, it subtracts from here and fills lower. Each charcoal has a timer on it. It burns for one minute and 40 seconds. Once it goes out, you're going to have to relight the forge. We don't want to waste that. So we're just going to gather up a bit more charcoal and toss it in. You can always remove excess charcoal at any point. We do have ambiental, so it is getting rather hot next to the forge. So I'm going back off for a little bit. Once the forge is done, once this heats up to it's going to be 1080 degrees Celsius. This will become an alloy. We can cast it. This shows you what the temperature of the forge is. If we had a bellows. I just punched a rock. If we had a bellows, we could place it here to blow onto the forge that would increase the temperature of the forge, but it would use the charcoal faster. So it's got trade offs as do most things in terraforma craft. OK, so the bismuth bronze is done. It says it's bismuth bronze. We can now pull this out like we would before. Pull out all the excess charcoal. We don't want to waste it. Open it up. Pour out the bismuth bronze into the chisel mold. We're going to need this chisel in a very short time. Place that there. This will burn out once it's done with the last of the charcoal. I'll put the excess there. And we want to grab a I have sticks on me. The bismuth bronze is now solidified. You can right click to pull it out or you can place it in your crafting grid. I'll do this. Turn this into a chisel because we need this for the next important part. We want to take rhyolite here. We need to chisel it into smooth rhyolite because we need that to make a quern. We put those like that to underneath. That gives us the quern. We do another two stone plus a stick above it gives us the hand stone. We can now put these on the ground. And by clicking that, we can grind. Let's grab a one piece of grain. Put it there. Grind it. You just need to click it once. It'll grind on its own. Once it's done, well, now we have flour, but this is also useful because we need the corn in order to grind down any non small nuggets that we pick up off of the ground. So if we go mining, for example, right over there where the iron is, if we mine up 
a chunk of hematite. It will either be poor, normal, or rich. We need to grind it in the handstone. Actually, we need to hammer it first, wash it in our sluice, then grind it in our handstone, then wash it in the sluice again, and then it will be this powder form, which we can then use in the forge to, well, forge tools. And the charcoal pit is done. You can tell because the particle stopped. We dig it. And there we go. Charcoal piles, just like what I have stacked up right there. So this is like the smallest. You could technically just do one pile of logs to make a, a very small charcoal pile. This is the smallest I would do. I'm probably never going to do another one this small again. From now on, I'm going to aim to make much larger ones because here I got 13 out of that. Not a ton, but, you know, definitely good enough to get us started. I'm also going to mine up all these so I can store them in a chest since it's a little more space efficient. We can make a very large charcoal pit, make it nice and deep, nice and round. We can use the bricks that I made earlier, the ones that I hate. I have no clue where I put them, maybe in a chest. Yep, the mud bricks. We can use those to make a charcoal burning building. Now, I might actually do that. And then you can just fill it up, light it up, and come back to it later. And since I'm re-recording stuff, I might as well re-record this one. In order to get raw stone, like this rhyolith here, what we need to do is mine away all the blocks on each of its six sides. So this one's a good example. If I remove this block here and this one up here, and then remove the block behind it. I got to remove this one now because it shifted. Now the top is clear. The four sides are clear. We just need to remove the one on the bottom. We mine this away. Okay, two, two things just happened there. One, the raw stone dropped, and we picked that up. Two, you heard that sound, that crumbling sound? If you hear that while you're mining, stop mining. That means you're at risk of causing a cave-in. Or that there has been a cave-in. <laughs> but that's how you get your raw stone, and you need three for your stone anvil. You need two for your handstone. And you need four for your quern. So together, that's nine minimum. You will need more in the future. But hey, now you know how to actually get them. If you mine a raw stone, it only drops the loose stone. If you mine cobblestone, it will drop as cobblestone. So figuring out how to mine them, it's pretty easy. But once you get the pattern, while you're mining for ore, you'll be able to get a lot of raw stone if you're looking for it. Uh, episode's running just a little longer than I expected it to, but uh, what can you do? Before we go, I want to show you one more important thing. So we have our quern now and heads up, I'm going to call it a quern all the time. It's a habit I got into and I haven't been able to break it. Now we have it, we can put our charcoal in it. The same way we ground flour, we can grind the charcoal. This will give us charcoal powder. We can then use this charcoal powder. Again, gunpowder. But most importantly, we can use it to boil water to make purified water. And that's water we can drink without getting sick. Right now, I have soup in the pot. I can't pull it out. Uh, if I was to make the purified water, we'd grab our bucket of water, click it on the pot, put the charcoal in, Put logs underneath, light it on fire, wait for it to boil, and then it'll be pure. Once we have pure water, we can go over to our barrel here, which I made earlier and I didn't show it on camera. Just seven lumber in a U shape. And we can open it up and we can either right click to put in or pull out. Or you can put it into this slot and it will fill up. Or again, put in a slot to pull it out. If you have something like vinegar in here. You can put vegetables here and seal it to, to make the vegetables last longer. Actually, it doesn't have to be vegetables. It can be almost anything. But yes, this is how you seal the a barrel, and that's used for quite a few recipes. 
Anyway, we'll get to that next episode. Until then, thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Later. Hello there. Welcome back to Terraformer Craft Hard Rock. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We're going to jump right in and start today with some farming. First, we need to make a set of hoes. We can make two at once if we use this sort of recipe here. And then we should grab some seeds and we'll look at the next part of this. So in Terraformer Craft, all plants have a growth range. Here we are, we're in the guidebook. It shows you that we need a soil hydration between 15 and 65% for cabbage and a temperature range between negative 10 and 27 degrees Celsius. That's true for every plant. You'll see that some of them have low hydration minimums and some of them, like maize here, has a high hydration. Unlike vanilla, we do not need to build our farm next to water. If we till this soil here, even though we are quite a distance away from the water, you can see that it has 18% hydration all the way up here. If we go down here. This also has 18 because we're not next to the water. <laughs> we click that one. That's at 98 because it's directly next to the water. So you do not need to be right next to water in order to provide hydration to your crops, which means you can build farms quite far away from water. And depending on what crop you're growing, you're not going to want it next to the water because you yeah, look at cabbage again. If it has greater than 65% humidity, uh, hydration, the crop will die. So we can plant our cabbage up here with no problem and it will grow well, perfectly fine. Carrots need 25% hydration, so we can't quite do that here. And that was barley. Barley requires 18, so we can do our barley up here also. We cannot pick up water sources yet, so we can't really transport water up to our farm. But in the future, we will have ways to move the water, even though we can't yet create source blocks. And that will be a way to help hydrate the soil. No, if you're going to hydrate the soil, do not hydrate it with salt water. If you try growing something alongside salt water, I'm pretty sure it kills it. I'd have to double check on that. There we go. We got our first crops going. So then we can start growing some food. In addition to what we're going to have to be hunting. Let's see. Tomatoes should require a high hydration. They require 30 to 90. So we can't do that. And rye requires 25 so we can't do that either to get to this page with all the different crops you need to go either to your advanced mechanics here and go down to crops it is in alph alphabetical order or you can select entity index and scroll down to crops and this will just give you a detailed description of all the different crops the different nutrition since there are three and tell you all the stats on different crops because of Jade. We have in the upper part of the screen, a description of the crops. It tells you the temperature, the hydration, the growth stage, the yield and the nutrition's. We also get the information if we have our hoe equipped. Each crop has a nutrition requirement. Cabbage is nitrogen. If we find a fertilizer with nitrogen, we add it to the field here with the cabbage. It will help the crop grow faster and yield a larger yield when it's done. However, it will consume that nitrogen, but it will add phosphorus and potassium at the same time. So what you can do is fertilize your fields and then you want to rotate the field so that you get the most out of each season, each growth cycle. You grow your cabbage in the field, you use up the nitrogen. So then you plant something that doesn't use nitrogen. Let's say, uh, let's say carrots. And the carrots would uh, absorb, say, potassium, but add nitrogen back in and so on and so forth. That way you can get larger yields from the same size farm field. OK, this is actually working this time. I put two rhyloride rocks into my pot with water. It is boiling. I did add a second log. So, I mean, I did add a third log. So I'm going to have three in here total. Let's see how long it takes to boil. 
Once this is done, the water should be safe to drink. We don't have to worry about getting sick. In the meantime, I'm waiting for this stuff to all melt so I can make an axe, a shovel, and a prospector's pick. And uh, if you look all the way up there, you see those funny looking dots? That's actually pollution. We are generating pollution over here and I have never used the pollution mechanic before, so I don't know what it does exactly or how to reduce it, but I do know that it can cause um, explosions. So we're going to have to be careful and figure that stuff out. And by the way, you can pick up charcoal with your hand. You don't need to use a shovel. However, because we have these, they will automatically default to using a shovel. So if you don't want to use a shovel, just make sure you don't have it in your inventory. That is almost ready. This is done. So now we have boiled water. So I can grab this bucket, remove that, that in here. And now we have boiled water, which is safe to drink. And this rock, which we got from boiling the water, can be crushed into flux, which we can then use to weld ingots together to make our anvil. I'll just stick that in there, grind it. It did take three logs and if each log is a minute 15 so we're talking taking no well, over three minutes for the water to boil so if you can find a log that has a longer burn time like we might be able to get away with just two cedar blocks uh cedar logs as opposed to three ash but yeah let me just stick our flux in there and when we have our copper ingots we can then weld them together that is something we'll tackle in a little bit because once these are done that's done let's make our prospectors pick once this is done we can go explore and i can show you prospecting i did just do a short on prospecting but this will be a little more in-depth look at how to actually prospect okay let's make a few quick tools here we're going to need some plant string we're going to need three sticks and the string to make a crook. We need this for getting silkworms. I will describe that in a moment. Uh, we're going to make our shovel, our bronze axe, and our prospector's pick. Then we need to convert some of this flint into flint shards, which we then turn into flint scrap. And then two flint scrap and two more plant string. So I need a Grab a bit more thatch here. Put those two like that and that, and that gives us some flint shears. In hard rock, we can get string from killing spiders. We can get yarn from shearing sheep or alpaca or muskox. I think those are the three that provide wool. Or we can get Silkworms from Ex Nihilo. I think that's the right mod. What we need to do though is normally you would crook just a leaf. Doesn't work in hard rock. We need to shear the leaf. Now we have a leaf block that we can put down. And then if we crook it now, we've got a chance to get... Oh, it regrows. How nice. We have a chance to get Silkworms. Let's go grab a few more leaves here and try this again. There we go. We got a silkworm. So let's uh, dump these items. And you know what? Might as well replace these with the good tools now. And there we go. We have a silkworm. So if we go up to one of these trees I planted. You know what? Let's go over here because there's a lot of trees all in close proximity. If we shift click this onto the leaf, it will now infest the leaf. This will eventually progress to 100% infestation and it will spread to the other leaves. Once it's at 100%, we can then crook it again to get silkworms and silk, which we can then use for string. So quick addendum. The uh, the infested leaf, yeah, it hasn't spread. So 
So what we might have to do is just shear a whole bunch of leaves and then try infesting them. So let's uh, do that now. But if we crook this infested leaf, we get worms and we get string. There we go. That gives us a nice 30 plus leaves. We're going to just clear out this area a little bit more. Put these down. And let's try infesting these. So that one's infested. And that one's infested. And hopefully now all of these leaves will become infested, which will give us a lot more string. Nope. These don't work either. We might have to infest the leaves individually. Now that we have a prospector's pick, we can get started on actually finding four veins. So we have some tetrahedrite here, which is a copper bearing ore. So if we right click with our pick, we'll see at this location, we found a small sample of tetrahedrite. Uh, do note with these lower tier tools like the bronze and the copper, you can get false negatives where it'll tell you there's nothing there when there is. So here we got small. When you prospect, it will search 12 blocks in that direction, that direction, that direction, that direction, that one, and below you. So a 25 by 25 by 25 cube centered on the block you checked. If it detects ore within that cube, it will tell you. Since we found a small sample here, we're going to head a few blocks this way and try again. All right, we found nothing. Let's move a few blocks over and check. Now we found a trace. Trace is smaller than small. So at this location here, we are getting further away from the main uh, heart of the vein. So let's head this way now. We check here. Nothing. That might be a false negative again found trace again. Okay. So here's trace. Here's small and there's trace. So which means if we go in this direction, it should also give us small or trace or nothing at all. Yeah, nothing. So this is heading further away from the heart of the vein. So if we head in this direction, it should start to go up. Now we have a medium sample. We go over here, nothing, medium sample, trace, medium sample, small. Okay, so that's telling me that this vein is one, fairly deep, and two is centered around here. So if I put a mark right here, If we then get out our shovel, we start digging down. And remember, blocks have gravity. So if we mine incorrectly like that, we will cause the blocks to collapse. We can start digging down. And after, oh, you know, what? I should not be doing this out with, without ladders. So we're going to grab some ladders and then we're going to dig down and we're going to look for the ore. In the meantime, we should absolutely pick up all of these because these are useful for making copper tools or copper ingots. And we do need to make 14 copper ingots in order to make our copper anvil, which is our next major task. So I'm going to gather up these. I'm going to get some ladders. We are going to dig down and then we're going to look for ore. Well, I grabbed some ladders. Got them in here. They do fit in a vessel, and this is actually a pretty good way to store supports and ladders is you keep them in a vessel while you're going out. But our center point right there is almost directly over this cave, so we can use this cave to help speed up the process a bit. What we want to do, though, is build some support beams. If we do this, this will prevent any block in a three by three from that center block there from collapsing. So gravel falls in terra firma craft as well as vanilla. We place it there. It's not going to fall, which means we can start digging here and we won't have to worry about anything collapsing on us just yet. We are going to want to dig down a bit further though, since the, the heart is a little that way. We go this way a bit. 
And now we found ourselves on top of the Rhylorite again. Rhylite? I'm going to keep saying that one wrong too. But there we go. Now we found some Tetrahedrite. And uh, if you notice, one, two, three. If we dig this one. The uh, four, okay. So it's actually four from the center block. So that one collapses. So what we want to do now is clear out an area over here, over the Rhylorite, or sorry, over the Tetrahedrite. And we're going to stick down another set of supports. And then we can start digging out all this ore. There's two ways to do this, early game at least. You can either do what we're doing here, where we're putting supports down and mining out as we go. Or you could do a top down method where you essentially build a giant quarry and you just mine everything out from the top down. Another trick is wood does not collapse uh, logs or planks. So if we run back home quickly and grab ourselves a few planks, we can place those down. We can mine a rock. Um, we can mine some of the tetrahedrite, place a plank down, and then place a support on top of the plank, and it will not collapse on us. And like a dummy, I forgot to record. So we put a slab there, put a slab there, and then we put our supports here. The supports can be mixed and match. You don't have to use one wood type. And now everything around here will be protected from caving in on us. However, we are digging down to collect all this tetrahedrite. We are going to need a lot of logs to continue doing it this way since. Well, if we keep digging out like this. Uh, I mean, we're just going to be digging down, so we're going to be uncovering the ore as we go down. We don't have to worry so much about the roof caving in on us. But if we then start going down, say, say we drop down another three layers here. And then we decide that we don't want to have to keep worrying about collecting the ore up here. We want to start digging this way. We have to worry about cave-ins. So we would need more supports. As is, I think we should be good for now. This is going to get us a lot of ore. We are going to need to set up our sluice again since we need to hammer all this ore. We're going to need to hammer it to get rocky chunks, which we then have to wash in a sluice. Or when we get to create a bulk fan, which we're then going to need to uh, grind in a quern. I don't see it there. And then we need to wash it again, and then we'll have usable copper. And if you notice, we do have three different grades of copper here. We have normal, poor, and rich. The grade depends on how much ore you get. So the poor will give us three chunks, which will, when washed, will give us three copper powder or 15 millibuckets of copper. You need 100 millibuckets to make a ingot. So with poor, we're going to need uh, seven poor to make one ingot. Normal gives us 25, so we only need four. And then rich gives us 35, so we only need about three. And of course, we need to make, as I mentioned earlier, 14 ingots of copper. So we're going to need to get quite a lot from this. Now, you may have noticed something. That if you see those particles coming off of a rock, that means it's unstable. If we mine more rocks around it, it could collapse. You heard that? That means that, uh, but that's another sign that the rocks are unstable. They also shook a little bit when I mined them. If we continue mining them unsupported, they will collapse and cause a cave in. Now there's not much here to worry about. This is as safe a cave in as I could possibly cause. And I'm trying to actually do it to show you. There we go. That's what happens when it caves in. If a ore, if an ore rock caves in, 
the ore gets destroyed, you'll get just cobblestone. But yeah, that's what you want to avoid. That's what these supports are for. And just like I showed you in the first episode, we're going to set up the sluice here. So we want to mine out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. That one is where the water stops. So we're going to then place the sluice down on those two blocks. Just like that, after I finish picking up absolutely everything else. And then we have to clear down an additional block below that. There we go. Now the water is flowing in. We can then take our tetrahedrite we just mined up. Put this in our crafting grid with our hammer to get rocky chunks which we then throw into the water stream here. They will auto fill into the sluice and they'll be washed down into. Here we go. Chunks of tetrahedrite. Now we can either grind this in a quarn to get 30 tetrahedrite or once we have create, we can use crushing wheels or the millstone. And then once we have the 30 tetrahedrite, we wash it once again to get the powder, which we can then use in forging. Again, if we had a hopper down here, we could automatically collect or a shoot from create. We could collect all the items being washed and auto store them. Ooh, looks like we can make wooden hoppers. Might have to look into getting that set up to help speed up this process. All right. And this looks like I can make a small gear by chopping a slab on the chopping block three times. Put the slab there. Grab my axe. All right, we got our chest already. There we go. We got wooden hopper. All right, but I don't know if this hopper has an internal inventory like. Do vanilla hoppers have internal inventories? I forget. Yes, I do. I don't know if this has internal inventory. So let's find a tree to chop down so we get some logs going. We can make another uh, chest and then be able to just store everything into that chest from our sluice. While we're at, we could probably make a second sluice just to speed up the process a little bit more. OK, so the hopper method isn't exactly perfect. Sometimes the rocks jump up to the side or land here. But for the most part, they're going into the hopper, which, by the way, has one inventory slot. And get fed into the chest I have underneath the slab. So, yeah, you can automate this. It does have a little bit of waste if you're not watching it. So probably not the best method. But what we can then do now is clear a path this way. Oh, there's a pond here. Hmm. It's going to say clear path this way, and then we can make another sluice and have it go this way into another slot and have a second set. I'll have a second sluice going. Let's go make up a second sluice and we'll try that. There you go. Nice sluice. Yeah, that one doesn't work. So if I instead go this way. Yes, that works. OK. So now we got two sluices going, although we only have one of them semi automated. There we go. Now we can process twice the ore at once. We still haven't ground any of it down yet, though. Because we have the ore processing mod, which we've been making heavy use of the handstone here for the corn. 
it is very low on durability, as you can see from the red bar. So we're going to have to go get two more. Well, we have one here, but we're going to need to get some more raw stone so we can make another handstone. Thankfully, since we are mining over there, we can go dig out an extra raw stone without much issue. Oh, and uh, mobs can spawn in caves. So if you're going to be working in a cave, you got to be careful you don't end up uh, spawning creepers and whatnot. But here, so this raw phylorite, it is practically suspended by itself. If we dig out this and this, it pops off. And there we go. We've got another stone. We can go make our handstone. We do want a second one, so if I mine this block here. Right, we gotta be careful because we're a little bit close to causing a cave-in. Let's grab some more supports. I don't need it that tall. And that should support... Ooh. Except that's going to cause a problem. Because we want to mine out that stone. And then we want to mine out that stone. But because it's being supported by the actual support. If we mine it, it's going to stay floating. So we got to actually destroy the support we just put down. And then I can mine this one. And there we go. We got the raw stone back. And now we can put these down. And support the area again, and I can start mining up those. And uh, we should now have enough copper back at base to make our copper anvil. So I'm going to mine up a few more of these so I can get started processing a bit more. And we're going to start working on an anvil. And when the handstone's about to break, it will get this broken texture on it. Like you see, this is my third click since it got that texture. All right, it's still around. But yeah, so. When it does this, you know it's only got a few more uses left. You're going to want to make a backup handstone. So we just need to process a little more copper. I literally need 10 more millibuckets of copper. And we're done. Well, with this step, we can then go and make ourselves the anvil. Oh, and this is actually really useful. As I've been processing this, I've been getting dolomite. Dolomite can be crushed into flux. We need flux in order to weld the ingots together. So we're getting what we need to make the anvil just by processing the ore, which is very convenient. And we're going to close off this episode by making ourselves a copper anvil. Now, I didn't do this very smart. I put all these bits of copper in the vessel and then stuck in the forge. What I should have done is just fed in the bits of copper one by one had three ingot molds and the vessel here. So any overflow went straight into here. But what we can do now, ah, see, I took it off too fast. It re-solidified. So now I gotta wait for it to heat up again. What we can do now is start transferring all the copper from the vessel into the ingot molds, pull the ingots out of the molds. And when you pull an ingot out of the mold, there is a small chance the mold breaks. So you want to have extra molds. I have six. I should be good for a minute or so. There we go. The mold broke. I right clicked to pull the ingot straight out. What we can do with these now is toss them back in here quickly. We want to wait for them to be Hot enough that they say, yeah, I got, I got be smart with my inventory here. These guys say can wield a oh, weld. I want them to be at about 500, uh, about 900 degrees. When they start to turn orange, that's when you want to pull them out. It's close enough. Go over here, toss them both on. Shift click with the hammer. We now have a double ingot. I have to do this seven times in total. And when they're done, we'll be able to craft a copper anvil together. Well, 
One of them cooled down before I was ready. No, well, they both cool down. That's why I like waiting until they're 900 something. There we go. They get orange. They're close to melting. Then I hammer them. And this should be hot enough to last a little while. And yeah, so we're almost ready for the copper anvil. You cannot craft any copper tools on the stone anvil. I think I mentioned that in the last episode. And there we go. So that's done. We can ditch that there. Go pick up these, at least a few of them. Uh, that is almost ready to use. Toss those two on. You want to be careful. Once it turns orange, it can melt again. So you don't want it melting. Or at least it's getting close to a point where it can melt. In the future, when we get enough kaolite and graphite that we can start making fire clay, we can make a crucible, which will make this whole process much faster, much easier, much less risky. Uh, I should probably make... Oh, there... Wait, it's the crucible, you need fire clay, you do it in this shape here, you get the unfired crucible, you then fire it like you would anything else in the pit kiln, and then you can make a crucible which can hold 40 ingots at a time. To make the fire clay, you need ka kaolinite and graphite, which can be a bit of a pain to get your hands on. But once you have them, I want them to cool down. Uh, it makes your life just that much easier. And there we go. So now we have all of our copper ingots. Go over to our crafting table here. Make our copper anvil. And there we go. Now we can actually start making copper tools. When you put a copper ingot here, you can click plans and select whatever plan you want to work on. Picks, shovels, so on and so forth. We cannot make bronze tools with this anvil. To make bronze tools, we need to do the same thing. Make bronze in here, weld it together on the copper anvil, and then make a copper anvil. Sorry, and then make a bronze anvil. And then we can make bronze tools. Because the anvil has no durability, it's probably best to make a bismithinite anvil if you have the resources to make bismithinite. If you don't, just stick with a bronze anvil, you'll be fine. All right, but we're going to call it an end here. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you've had a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Later. Hello there, and welcome back to Terraformer Craft Hard Rock. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I have a slight addendum to my first episode to make. In Terraformer Craft, you need to keep your nutritions up. Each of these five different categories, once full, will allow you to have the maximum amount of hearts you can get. That is not the case in Hard Rock. The nutrition system is sort of just a vestigial holdover from Terraformer Craft. It doesn't really play any part. If we look in the Akashic Tome, we have the food book from Spice of... The Spice of Life? A Spice of Life? I forget. Either way, you get hearts by eating different foods. The different... Uh, here we go. We've got 461 different foods we can eat. Every additional food will add to the counter. And when you reach these different milestones, that's when you get extra hearts. And it is uh, not quite logarithmic, but you know, it goes 5, 15, 30, 60, that sort of thing. So you need to eat a lot of different foods to get the maximum amount of hearts. So you don't have to actually worry about making sure you eat a balanced meal. I play Terraformer Craft so much that I don't want to not keep a balanced meal because I don't want to get into a bad habit of not doing it. So I'm going to be doing that. But for you, you don't really have to worry about it. If you want to just grow carrots and eat just carrots, except for getting additional food here and there to max out your health, feel free. Anyway, with that said, I discovered something about two minutes ago, which I need to share with you. So we have these small nuggets, this small cassiterite. It is worth five millibuckets of tin. 
if we use it in a vessel right now. Or I can crush it with a hammer and get two rocky chunks, which can then be washed into chunks and essentially I can double it. If you pick up small stuff off the ground, the small nuggets, crush them with a hammer and wash them with a sluice once you get a once you get enough to make your first saw, because that's going to allow you to make them last even longer. So I'm going to go through here in a little bit and crush down everything with my hammer and make sure we are good on ore. We have quite a lot of ore. In fact, I've changed my setup down here just a little bit. I've dug out an extra row here, so we now have both sluices next to each other. And I have trap doors. Trap doors are made with six lumber and you get three of them per craft. And if you put them over the top of the water block from the sluice washing down, when the sluice produces the item, it will hit the bomb side of the trap door and not go flying out. Last episode you saw, I would have wind up with rocks over here, rocks over there, rocks over here. Doesn't happen if you have the trap doors on top of the water source. And then I have another trap door here leading to my chest. And we're just gathering up all of our ore here. I now have uh, whew, six, seven stacks worth of copper crushed. I still have to process them through the quarn and then wash them again. Plus that there, we've got quite a lot of copper, which is good. Means we can, well, once I see how much tin I have, we might be able to start working on a tin anvil today, a tin bronze, and uh, get rid of this thing. All right, so I'm going to process a bit more, and then we've got a few things we need to cover today, and, well, we'll just you know, jump right in. So here's a major change from terraform a craft that's present in hard rock. In order to make leather, okay, we need the large leather hide, which takes an oiled hide. In order to make an oiled hide, though, we need a mixing bowl from Firma Life and the spoon from Firma Life. Well, in order to make the mixing bowl, we need glue, which is fairly simple. That's just uh, lime water and bone meal that gives you glue in a barrel. But the mixing bowl itself requires treated lumber. The way you get treated lumber is you wrap lumber around beeswax. And of course, you get beeswax from beehives. So we need to make beehives and get them started rather quickly because bees can take a long time to actually propagate. So as you see here, we need two frames and a beehive can hold four frames. So we really need to make six frames. We need a thatch block and lumber. And we're also going to need some sticks. So I have just about everything. Let's grab some sticks and we need four thatch or four straw. Run over here. That's our block. We need to make a frame. Uh, sorry, a string mesh. And we actually need six of these. We put back in there. Of course, I wasn't watching what I did and everything goes flying. Okay, that, right, they don't stack. <laughs> All right, well, we'll just cue them out onto the grid for now. And then we make our beehive. Pick up a few of these and then we want to find a space which is fairly open because we need to surround it with a lot of flowers. So let's go. F um, here's good enough. So it's got 19 flowers around it. It has no frames. We start putting the frames in and you see it says no queen. Right now with 19 flowers around, it has a one in 61 chance of spawning a queen every day. Let's pick up those. We've got our knife here. We're going to just start collecting some additional flowers. And you got to be careful flowers. In Terraforma Craft, they don't respawn. Uh, so once you've depopulated an area of flowers, you're not going to get more natural flowers coming back. You have to transplant them from elsewhere. So don't destroy flowers unless you absolutely have to. And uh, I just recommend not doing it. With 29 flowers are down to one in 51. Now this will get faster once we actually get a queen in here. 
And queen bees have stats too. Uh, they have traits. Each queen can have up to four traits. And I'll go over the traits in a minute. But those affect things like what temperature they can safely operate at. How much honey they produce. So if we go to Firma Life, we go down to beekeeping. Here it shows you the recipes. Uh, list of abilities. Hardiness allows the bees to produce honey at lower temperatures. Max of 10. You have 10 levels per trait. And you get the traits by going up by breeding the bees. So by having two queens in a frame, there's a chance that a another queen is produced and we'll have a combination of the other queen's traits, but some of them may go up. So that's how you increase the different traits. Hardiness, uh, productivity, increases the speed at which honey is produced. Mutant, increases the viability of traits passing on. Fertility, increases the chance of the bees breeding. Crop affinity, has a chance of adding nutrients to any crops near the beehive. So if you can get bees with a high crop affinity, you can stick those in your farm and they will essentially auto fertilize your fields for you. Natural restoration will allow it to create new flowers. This is pretty much the only way to get new flowers aside from exploring. And calmness decreases the chance of the bees attacking you or you could just open the hives at night and the bees won't attack you. So we're just going to continue surrounding this hive with as many flowers as I can. And then we'll move on to the next part, which is sieves and collecting resources from water. And there I just accidentally destroyed a flower. So that's that was a waste. That's 57. We can hold about three more flowers. Oh, no, those were actually close enough that they were being counted. So let's go a little further away. There you go. That's the max amount of flowers that one beehive can detect. It now has a 1 in 20 chance of getting a bee every day. We can stack hives on top of each other. So I'm going to make another hive once I have the resources. And we're going to put it on top so we can double up on the flowers. We're also going to need seed oil for making leather. So as you're going around collecting wood to make charcoal, to build your house, all that stuff. Make sure you keep seeds that you get from trees uh these saplings or well in my case ash seeds but yeah make sure you hold on to them because we can crush them in our quarn into a seed paste which we could then boil in our pot where we could also boil water and turn it into seed oil water which we could then use for making leather for oiling the leather and we gotta keep our eye out for a type of plant called jute. I did collect some already. Uh, I could have sworn there was more over here, but I'm not seeing any. But yeah, you need jute in order to get jute fiber, which you need to make jute nets. And you need the jute nets to make oil from oil water. As I said, I do already have some jute. Need to keep an eye out for more. Jute requires more hydration than I'm getting all the way up where our base is. I'm going to need to make a little bit of a farm close to the water so I continue to grow jute because jute is a very, uh, it's used a lot. Now you can wash jute nets after you use them, so you can recycle them, but burlap that requires jute or hemp, which is not part of terraformer craft normally. And there's a few other things you need jute for. So might as well try to find as much as you can and uh, get a farm going. I could have sworn there was more over here. I'm having absolutely no luck. Ah, found some jute. So that's what it looks like. I am partially convinced this tree growing destroyed some of it. Because you usually find them in batches of five or so. And oh, well, here's a bit more up here. All right, so now we have this jute. What we want to do is we wash it in water and it becomes jute fibers. From there, we can make jute netting, which is used to turn olive oil water into olive oil and it becomes dirty. You have to then wash it. 
We can also use it to make leads. Coil rope, regular rope. Looks like you need it for a quiver. Uh, we can turn it into burlap, which we can then use the burlap to make beekeeper's clothing. Or a uh, chisel bits bag, iron flask. We're going to want one of those because, well, well, eventually we're going to make a water flask first, a leather one. Leather flask, since uh, we're going to have leather long before we have iron. And of course, we can make burlap clothing, which will keep us cooler during the summer. Oh, it looks like we make bandages out of burlap also. So, yep, burlap, important to get. Get the seeds, make a little farm. You're going to want to be growing it pretty much as long as you possibly can. And when you get a greenhouse set up, you're going to want to be growing it in the greenhouse too. I just finished washing up a bunch of copper. And we got kimberlite, which is diamonds. So we can either grind it down into diamond powder, or if we wait until we get crushing wheels, we can possibly get up to three. So we're going to just hold on to that. Yep. Not very useful right now. Oh. Um. Looks like a fish jumped out of the water and, uh, well, got stuck over here. That's free food. Let's go and take that and run. Uh, what was I going to say? Right, so Kimberlite. So, nope, that's diamonds. Not really too useful for us right now, but let's see. Can we really do anything with it? Diamond grit. Okay, there's going to be uses for it in the future. Not necessarily right this moment. Do that. Save on space. You can break down any cobblestone back into the loose stones. One, one cobblestone breaks down to four loose stones. Four loose stone equal one cobblestone. So good way to save on space doing that. And uh, well, we have enough copper now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up one copper ingot. And we're going to forge it on the anvil so you can see uh, how, how the anvil works. How you forge with an anvil. So we're going to want to leave those in there. These, because they're smaller, they will melt quickly. They'll fill up the one ingot mold. We'll have our one ingot of copper, and then we can go right over to the anvil. I'm going to get some of that going, and I'll bring you back in a minute. Yeah, see how much faster these are heating up? Definitely better than trying to melt them all in a vessel at once. And they should all fill up, but we've got 100 millibuckets. They'll fill up the one ingot mold, and then we can make sure the ingot is hot enough once we pull it out of the mold, and then we can go make something. Not sure what. There we go. It filled that. It's cooled off. Let's toss it back in. We want it to get... If it melts at 1080, we want to get it around the 950 zone. That way we got a little bit of leeway before it melts again. But it'll be very hot. We'll have a very long time to work it on the anvil. Because we can work it right now, but it will cool off as soon as we pull it off. And the longer it's off, the colder it gets. If you're working on the middle of it and it gets too cold, you can't work on it anymore. That's good enough. All right, so we toss it in here and then we can select a plan. I can make a tree tap, hammer, saw blade, wires, pickaxe. All these different things. Let's go for a lamp. We're going to need a lamp. So we have bend last, bend second to last, and draw third to last. That corresponds to these and these. We need to move this green arrow to line up with the red arrow. So we want to go a little past, draw, bend, bend. And we see it's not quite lined up. So we need to go back a little bit more. Uh, draw. Bend, bend. Nope, that was not far enough. That was too much. And that wasn't quite enough. And it's cooled down, so we can't work it anymore. So we gotta toss it back in, let it heat up. The longer it takes for you to create, uh, to craft something, the worse the tool will be. Uh, there are four tiers to tools. Poorly forged, 
well forged, expertly forged, and masterfully forged. Or perfectly forged. This isn't going to matter any. But there we go. For something else like a tool, you want it to be as well forged as possible. If it is not forged. Okay, so our bronze prospectors pick here. We made it using a mold. So the molds are the equivalent of poorly forged. For each better version of forged you get, the tool will get the equivalent of efficiency, unbreaking, sharpness, depending on what sort of tool it is. So you want it to be as well forged as possible. Lanterns is here. Uh, well, it's a more permanent light source. We don't have anything to put in there just yet, but I am going to need lanterns in the future. So no point in not making it now. This lantern, copper, bronze, pretty much everything but blue steel can take tallow or olive oil. Here we go. Lamps. So once we have fuel in it, we can either right click on it with a torch or a fire starter to light it. You have to click a bucket, right click a bucket onto it with whatever fuel source you're adding to it. You can make olive paste to make olive oil. We can use we can make tallow, which we get from blubber, which we get from orcas. Blue steel lamps are completely different. We can put lava in these. One bucket of lava will fill four blue steel lamps. And once you light them, they are permanent. They will never burn out. So getting to blue steel lamps uh, will give you a permanent light source. You don't have to worry about relighting your torch every two days. Lamps, when full, will last uh, about 30 days, I think it is. It might be 60 days. But yeah, they are much better than torches and you're going to want them when you can actually get them. There is one more trick. I don't like using this, but it is included in the mod pack. If we go to resource packs, we can go to this TFC underscore TNG dash anvil GUI. We make that active. Here we go. Now that we're back in, you see we actually have numbers on here. So before we started with the green arrow here and the red arrow was somewhere around this mark, this green mark being 110. If you notice, this has a plus two, that has plus seven, plus 13, plus 16. That moves it upwards. These minus three, minus six, minus nine, minus 15 will move it downwards. You can use these to help you figure out where you need to get it to go. One of the easiest ways to do it is just get the arrows lined up, figure out what you need from up here. So last time it was draw, bend, bend. So that's bend, bend is seven plus seven, that's 14. This is minus 15. So we would need to be plus one to begin with. We'd draw back and then bend twice and that would land us exactly on center and we would complete the plan in as few hits as possible. So yeah. You can use this if you're having trouble with the anvil, if you're new to terraformer craft, if it's if it's you know difficult, weird. I don't like using it. I'm going to disable it once I'm done explaining it, but it's a very useful tool if you don't feel like doing any of the guesswork. Another thing, the actual recipe up here will always be the same for the different type of item. So lamps will always have draw, bend, bend. But where the green arrow starts, where the red arrow starts will change based on the material you're using. Bismuth bronze, iron, steel, they will be in different locations. And every new seed you play on, they will be in different locations. But these will be the same. That's anvils for you. Hopefully you understand. If you don't, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to try to explain a bit better. But yep, yeah, let's uh, I need to keep making more string from those infested leaves back there and then we have to go build a sieve in the water and there we go we now have two beehives stacked on top of each other to place the second beehive just shift click it on uh, if you try just clicking with it in your hand you're going to open up the beehive so you have to shift right click and so now we've got eight frames one in one in 20 chance of any frame getting filled by a bee, 
they all using the same 60 flowers, so I don't need to worry about, well, finding more flowers or clearing out a bigger space. It's uh, rather compact. And so now we have two 5% chance of getting bees every single day. Still no bees, but I failed to mention how you actually get beeswax. So, well, here's how you do it. Let's say there's a queen bee in this hive, in this frame. What you want to do is you take it out, take your knife, and right click on the frame with a knife. I don't know if this flint knife actually works. You might need to make a stone knife or a copper or better knife from terraforma craft. But you would right click on the frame with the knife. You will hear a pop sound. The queen will be killed and you will get one bees wax. You then put the frame back in and start again. Do not kill the last queen in your hive. Having at least one queen in the hive increases the odds of you getting a new queen. Getting two queens in the hives will make it even faster. So what I always do is make sure I have two queens and I will only clear out the other two. And of course, you want to keep the better queens that you can get your hands on. So if this one has, say, one hardiness, but this one has three hardiness and one productivity, obviously you kill the one with only one trait. That's how you actually get beeswax from this. This can take a long time. I mean, you only have a 5% chance every day of getting a new queen. That's how you get beeswax. Then once we have the beeswax, then we can actually start getting into the good stuff. Uh, we need it, of course, as I mentioned, to make the treated lumber. If you want to make a waterproof hide to make a kayak, you need that. If you want to make sealed bricks, which you need to make your cellar, which will drastically improve the timer on your food. Any food stored in a cellar will last much longer. So you do want to get a cellar up as soon as you possibly can. But yeah, getting the beeswax is a priority. Once you have that, you can make the mixing bowl. And the mixing bowl is used to make a lot of different things, including bread. As I said, the leather, or at least oiling the hide so you can make them into leather, chocolate, bread, different types of bread, because this is wheat bread. Um, sorry, this is bread that can be leavened, raises, whereas you can also make flat bread, pizza dough, so you can make pizza. You're going to want to make at least one pizza for getting all your hearts up. And then we can look at making some of the Firma Life ovens. We need to make a top oven, a bottom oven, and that will allow us to cook without needing the cook pot. In fact, once we have a bottom oven, we can stick a cook pot on top of it and not have to do this because this can cause fires. We don't want to put this in our house. We could put a bottom oven down and put the pot on top and not have to worry about burning down our walls. So I think we'll handle that next episode. Oh, and a little trick. Shift right click opens a barrel. And shift right click will also close the barrel so you don't have to go into the screen to open and close it. You can do it from the world. And I cleared out a little farm plot down right next to the water where it's 98% hydration. So we can start growing our jute down here. So as I said, we need to make some of these strainer boxes. They're going to take some wooden hoppers, some planks, a chest, and then we need to include a strainer on top of it. On top of it? it requires a strainer, so we probably have to click it in. And water on top. So we have to place it under the water and we need to use a strainer. Ah, one of these strainers. Got it. So that's just a string mesh plus sticks for that one. This is an iron mesh. We can't make that yet. That's obsidian. We definitely can't make that yet. There are fisher ones, but those require iron and nether again. So yeah, we can't make those yet. We're just going to have to settle for the survivalist strainer, which is string plus sticks. I can actually make that right now. Uh, I, I should have enough wood. I have a whole bunch of logs over here. Um, I'm laying out our floor plan for our base. I'll include a picture of it. I'm going to build a Roman style villa. And this is the outer wall to the villa. 
and there's going to be buildings built onto the outer walls. And I got to figure out where I want to place my pit kiln or my, um, not pit kiln, my fire pit, charcoal pit, whatever it's called, where I make all my charcoal. Why I've been making up some loam bricks, because then I can build it on the surface and still have it be insulate. Um, airtight. That's the word. I am not very not work today. Okay. Strainer. So we need chest. That's eight. This is another eight. That's 16. That's a plank. Yeah. Okay. We need a lot of lumber for this. I think I have a, yes, I have that already. That'll save me a little bit of trouble. All right. So we need two chests. And then we can do one chest there, that, uh, nope. There we go. That's the wooden hopper. And then we need each dose is four planks I mean, four lumber. So we need 16 lumber. We have 15. Of course, we are literally one short and two sticks. Might as well grab that also. So that's our strainer block. That's a mesh. That's our survivalist strainer. Okay, so now we have a strainer. If we put this in water and we're going to want to be one block below the surface at least. Uh, you know, might as well just put like right there. We stick the strainer in. The percentage bar is going up. We need to get out of the water so I don't drown. Drown. Oh, come on. I accidentally drank the water and now I'm hurt. As this percentage bar fills up, it will then produce an item. Looks like we can put bait in here to catch fish. Uh, looks like we can get andesite, limestone, clay, diamond, gold, drowning. Thank you for letting me know I'm drowning. I, I figured it out the hard way. Diamond, gold, not diamond. Gold, silver, gold, silver, string, glass bottles, sticks. Okay. A couple useful things. The clay is probably going to be most useful because there's a little bit over there, but I'm having a very hard time finding clay. And I've seen a lot of people on the Discord saying they're having a hard time finding clay. So getting these strainers set up and we're going to make a few more so we can have multiple strainers in the water. Get them set up so we can passively collect clay uh, is going to make our life so much easier. And let's check how our strainer is doing. Oh, we go where I see. We got some limestone, which is good because that's flux. Some andesite, which is going to be good for making andesite alloy and a glass bottle. All right, so what can I use a glass bottle for in this mod pack? Honey, obviously. Milk. I think we have Farmer's Delight, don't we? Well, it says right there, Farmer's Delight. So that's a yes. Melon juice. Catch lightning bugs, apparently. We can use it for brewing, since we can brew in this mod pack. We can convert it into a jar, which we can then use for jarring things like berries, fruit. So we have fruit to last us through the winter. Oh, we need them to make electron tubes. Okay. Okay, yeah. Nice. So we're going to need these glass bottles in the future. Not necessarily right now. We certainly don't have anything to make with the glass bottles. But uh, yeah, um, <laughs> waste of inventory space for now. Just chuck them in there. But yeah, limestone. So that's more flux. We can also use it to make limestone bricks to make in the future. Uh, if we want to make limestone brick blocks. Yeah, that's it. But still, limestone is, is um, flux in general. We're going to need a lot of it. Getting dolomite from washing our stuff is very, very nice. Getting limestone just from having a strainer in the water is also going to be nice. Limestone also looks like a really nice block. Uh, 
I don't have any near me, right? So I don't necessarily want to be building my base out of blocks that I don't have near me. But yeah, limestone would be a nice block to use. Well, this is bad. I just got attacked by a zombie that managed to come out of a hole somewhere. And I now have the infected stat. Which means that when this reaches a uh, completion, which I think is four tiers, it'll take about two days, about 40 minutes, I will die and become a zombie. And then I'm going to have to fight myself. Unless I can get uh, golden apple. Let's Oh, By the way, we got cherry trees and we got cherries. So let's get someplace safe or safer and then I can look in the guidebook to see say if it says anything. No, the guidebook does not say anything. So golden apples will heal me. If I can find myself some apples, it's not apple season. There are not going to be any apples. Um, golden carrots might work. I do have golden powder um, and I maybe silver too. When you get Infection, zombies use it to heal from infection, can save your life. Okay, so we can use a silver carrot. And uh, let's go back and check the gold carrot. Gold apple, enchanted golden apple, and golden carrot all work the same. Okay, so we're lucky. We have some silver right here. We just need to crush it down and wash it. So I'll do that, and then we can take a carrot from in here. We do have a few still. And cure ourselves. Wait, I need to wash this first. And we saw that we can use this to make tallow. We need five rotten flesh. We have two. Well, we can store it in here. Uh, it doesn't get any worse. It's not going to make any of our food in there rotten. And we've just moved on to the second tier infected. This is fun. All right, since this is a sickly green, I'm going to wait till I have everything done. And then I'll bring it back in so you don't have to stare at this screen like I do. All right, we got our carrot. We got our silver powder. Makes us a silver carrot. There we go. We are now cured of the zombie illness. We do not have to become zombies any longer. Which is nice because if I die, anything that's still on me will be on the zombie. Which means he'll access to any of my tools. Which means I would have to get more tools, but he'll be in my base. So, the only option I would really have is to dig a hole, climb in it, die in the hole, and then when I respawn, make a spear to kill myself in the hole yeah it's we don't have to worry about it at least hey and now you know what to do too in case you wind up getting infected also because you can't get infected by drinking dirty water so yeah now you know well now that i've survived a potential zombie outbreak i think we're gonna call it an end here if you have questions feel free to ask in the comment section or check out the discord linked in the description for the hard rock discord play of us over there and happy to answer questions if we can until then, thank you for joining me today. Hope you've had a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Later. Hello there, and welcome back to Terraformer Craft Hard Rock. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I am. It took 16 months for me to get from newly created channel to 1,000 subs. And you guys got me to 2,000 subs in 51 days. Thank you so much. So, uh, yeah, bonus TFC today. Uh, I've been going around just working on the base a bit, collecting stuff. I've begun building... I think I showed this in my last episode. I built a little lo um, mud hut. Mud hut. We're going to fill it up with logs so I can fire 27 piles of logs at once to make charcoal. That should make somewhere in the area of 160 charcoal when it's done. So that's going on there. A bunch of our crops are fully grown, although you notice the beets does say it's too hot out. It uh, It's getting quite hot out right now. Uh, the garlic is too hot, so they're not growing when it's too hot. And they should actually be dying. They haven't yet. 
Uh, we got some barley is fully grown. You see it says mature and yield 20. So if I gave this fertilizer for specifically the nutrient that barley likes, that multiplier would be higher. So right now, if I harvest it, I'm going to get three or four units of barley. Obviously, if it had 100% yield, you'd get something more like 20 units of barley. Likewise, our cabbage is ready to harvest, but I'm not going to harvest that yet. Although you don't want to let it sit too long because they can rot and die on the vine or well in the ground here. Now, I've been shearing leaves and infesting them individually because I tried infesting a leaf, hoping that all the leaves would be infested and it wasn't happening. Well, apparently I just didn't give it enough time. I put one silkworm there and after about three, maybe four days, it did actually spread to another leaf. Likewise, this one spread and uh, that one hasn't spread yet. Who out over here? That hasn't spread either, but they are slowly spreading. So. Yeah, if you have trees, and you toss these silkworms in, they will eventually spread. It just it takes quite a while before they do. But, you know, once once this one is fully infested and this one spreads, you know, it can spread to all those and this one can spread to more. So it's sort of exponential growth. Eventually, we can have the whole tree ready to harvest. But you won't get any saplings when that happens. So make sure you have saplings from other trees nearby. So what are we going to do today? Well, well we're going to do a few things. First off, we're going to make a bit more tallow. I did make some. It's actually pretty easy. We need our... Well, we need to finish eating our soup. So I'm going to wait till after I'm done with this last batch of soup. And then we'll make tallow. I have some in here. We can then fill our lamp and light the lamp and have a permanent... Well, semi-permanent light source as opposed to using torches. With the uh, Barrels 2012 mod which we have in this pack, we can stick, where is it? There we go. We can stick the lamp on our back. And if we have fuel in here, it will actually light up because we have dynamic lighting. That's how I can walk around with a torch in my hand and the torch casts light. Same will happen with the lantern on my back. So you can actually carry a light source around with you aside from the torch in your hand. Useful if you're cave diving and whatnot. I'm mostly just going to leave this one here around the base to help light up the area. Oh, not there. That's in the way of the door. So we're going to make some more tallow. And I have pre-made all the copper. Sorry, all the zinc, all the bismuth and all the copper we need to make one anvil or at least yeah, to make the 14 ingots to make the anvil. So what we're going to do in a little bit is we're going to pull these molds out, melt all of the copper, bismuth, tin, sorry, zinc down in here, put it into a vessel. The vessels can actually hold 30 ingots, which is convenient. You only need 14 ingots to make the anvil though. So we'll melt them all down. Once that's done, we'll stick the vessel in here to keep it hot and then slowly just transfer out like we did making the copper anvil. And then once that's done, we're going to retire the copper anvil. We're going to have to go out looking for kaolite and graphite so we can make the crucible. And then we can melt down the copper anvil back into copper, which we could then use on bronze in the future. And I haven't checked this yet. No bees. So, I mean, it's only been about six days. Yeah, this is going to take a while. All right, I'm going to get a few things prepped and then we'll be back and start making our anvil, our new anvil. I did a little exploring. We have, of course, our copper mine here. I found some silver up here, some zinc, more zinc, a bit of gold. We're good on early game metals. And of course, we got iron right here, so we should be good for a while. And now that I've got all that done, I've got, well, all the copper we need plus this here, zinc and bismuth. We're going to make 14 ingots of bismuth bronze. We're going to do 20% zinc, 20% bismuth and 60% copper. And then we're going to use that to replace the copper anvil with a bismuth ink. Well, bismuth, bismuth, yeah, I'm getting tongue tied with a bismuth bronze anvil. 
The reason I'm doing that is, well, one, to use up the bismuth. We don't need bismuth again, really, until we get to blue steel, which is quite a ways away. And I mean, otherwise, I'm not using the steel or the bismuth. So use the bismuth. We make the bismuth bronze anvil. Anvils take no durability damage when being used because bismuth bronze has the lowest durability tools, although I think it is slightly faster. Um, we're just going to skip that. We're going to make most of our tools out of bronze made with tin, although we could use zinc. We'd rather save the zinc for andesite alloy. And yeah, so we'll just make bismuth bronze anvil. The anvil doesn't take durability, so it doesn't matter. That's got lower durability and we get to make use of the stuff we have. So this will cool down pretty fast, actually. So once we're done melting all the copper and all the bismuth into it, it will alloy. We can then stick it into the forge, into this slot here, heat it back up. And once it's hot enough, we can start pulling out the bronze ingots. And now right now it says unknown alloy. That's because we have the wrong ratio. When the zinc gets added, it will be the correct ratio. The vessel should know that it's the correct ratio and it will switch over to bismuth bronze. There we go. So it's bismuth bronze. We can toss in here. It's going to start heating up again. We can grab that extra ingot. And like I said, once we get this hot enough that it melts, should be around 900 and 985 degrees. So when we hit 980, obviously we want it to get hotter because as soon as we take it off, it'll start cooling down again. Go we'll start casting out the bronze ingots and then we just start welding. And while that's going on, I did make up a few more items to finish off this ceramic quest. Next, we just need to pick up uh, just about everything that's in here that we haven't already. Although I'm going to need to make a new prospector's pick mold and a new chisel mold because I made them and used them before I got the quest. And well, truth be told, we're not really going to use these molds anymore because once we can forge them, forged are much better than molds. But we hold on to it. It doesn't hurt to have them as backup. And we are getting very hot standing next to that forge. So let's just uh, hop in the water to lower our temperature a bit. And we can check on how these are doing. A little bit of string, sticks, bones. By the way, we can fill up water bottles from the river here. But you can't actually drink from them, at least not in 118. In 1.20, we'll be able to craft bottles that can hold multiple drinks. Whereas the ceramic jug holds one. Depending on the glass bottle, it can hold up to 20, I think. But we're not there yet. All right, that's two bronze ingots down. And this is the last ingots. And yep, you can actually just shift click them right on and then shift click them back off. Well, let's, uh, let's take the rest of our coal out so we don't waste it. We don't have much coal, but what we do have, we don't want to waste. That's our seven ingots. That gives our bismuth bronze anvil. Pull this out. Use our pick to pick up the copper anvil, which we can store for now. Oh, hey, uh, so I'm carrying two anvils, so I'm over overburdened and exhausted. If I put one of these on my back, then I can move again. I'm still exhausted because I'm carrying an anvil, but that's how you can move around with two. Same with crucibles, same with filled barrels. So let's just dump that one there for now, since we don't need it. We can toss our flux back in there and put our hammer back in here. The hammer's level does not matter, but its durability does. So as we work stuff, the durability will drop. But now we have a bronze anvil. We can start, well, right now the forge is cooling down, so we can't do anything with that. But we can start making bronze tools. I'm going to need to finish processing all of this 
copper down. And we'll no longer have to worry about using molds. We can get bronze tools. And as I said in the last episode, we'll be able to get enchantment on the tools. What kind of enchantments. Poorly forged, well forged, expertly forged, and perfectly forged. And each up, each level above poorly forged gives it a essentially enchantment. Durability, efficiency, sharpness, maybe haste. I forget. But yeah. Now that window is open to us. So let's look at Tallow next. We have in here five rotten flesh and it could be rotted or uh, not rotted. You can find flesh like this on the ground. If you pick it up, it will rot pretty quickly. You can place it back down if you want. We need the rotten flesh with one bucket of water. We then need to fire it. You can make these stick bundles out of nine sticks or twigs and they burn for 36 seconds or you can combine them even further to a uh, sorry a stick bunch you can combine them further to make a stick bundle stick bundles can be burned like firewood in a pit kiln uh sorry in a charcoal pit so if you have a lot of sticks but not a lot of wood you can actually stick those in there uh let's make up a few i can show you just two stacked on top of each other. We're going to do four since that's one, one quarter of a log bundle. And you place them down just like you would logs. So, yeah, you can use that if you have a lot of sticks, but not a lot of firewood. And we uh, just fill that up. Grab our fire starter. Couldn't remember I left it. And just like firing soup or making boiled water once this gets up to temperature it'll start saying boiling and it'll boil down the rotten flesh into one one bucket of tallow which we can then put in our barrel over here the stick bunches do burn pretty hot and so they actually raise the temperature a little bit quicker i think than using regular logs and boy we're really gonna have to deal with this uh, pollution sooner or later so you have that pollution, which is carbon, and we're going to go into free camp for a moment. There are three types of pollution. Carbon, which looks like that. Sulfur, which looks like that. And then there's dust pollution. Dust pollution, <laughs> hey, look at that, is that right there, that block. That can explode. If it explodes, it explodes like a stick, like a block of TNT. It will do a lot of damage. You will get a lot of dust generating off of crushing wheels and the create millstones. So a way to solve that is instead of having it just like that, we can put down a trap door. Okay, well, you saw it dropped and it converted that into a lone path. If you place trap doors underneath whatever you are working with, so let's say our millstone, any dust pollution will actually pass through the trap doors and head downwards. This way you can actually store up that, uh, that burned out too fast. Oh, well, we got lucky. <laughs> Uh, that way you can actually store up dust and use it for controlled blasting and mining if you want. But now we have another barrel of tallow, which we can right click onto our copper lamp, put the rest into our barrel there. And now if we take, where did I put my torches? Ah, oh, they're my off hand. We right click with a torch. Now the lamp is lit. And that will provide us light as opposed to needing to place down a torch. If you pick it up, it maintains its fluid, but I think it puts it out. Yes, it does. So there we go. Now we've got a lamp that we can keep in here to keep the house lit all the time. Not that it has a roof and has to worry about anything, but that's one thing. One thing more down for us not to worry about for now. And you know what? Why don't we upgrade from a pot 
to some actual proper ovens. So you're going to have to forgive the broken textures. Um, I think there's a small issue with the version of Vexed Visuals I'm using. But we're going to need to make a top oven, a chimney, and a bottom oven. So bottom oven you make just like this. Chimney is just a straight line. You're going to want a few of them. Two, three. You're going to want to make sure that the smoke is being, you know, moved out of your house. And then we're going to want a top oven. That was wrong. And then we're also going to need to make bricks and mortar. So... Well, the good thing about the ovens is we can actually put it in the house and not have to worry about burning down this waddle because that fire pit will burn down the waddle. So I'm going to just break these down. Yeah, we're going to want to mine these out. I'm going to place the bottom oven down. Top oven on top. Oh, and thankfully that only appears to be an item glitch and not the full glitch. We put the Okay, those are glitched all the way. Put the chimneys on the back. And so now we have a top oven and bottom oven. But as you see, it says not insulated. We need to make brick blocks to put on either side of the top oven and the bottom oven. So we need at least four more bricks. And I don't I don't think we need bricks on top. We can figure that out in a bit. To make bricks, you do this that gives you three you need four bricks per no five bricks per brick that didn't make sense you need five bricks per brick block there we go and you get two bricks per so we need 10 of these we're gonna need a bit more clay and there are two ways to make these bricks. If we had a bellows, we could fire them in the forge. We don't have a bellows. So we're going to need to put them in a pit kiln. But, well, putting four bricks in a pit kiln is very inefficient. So what we could actually do is grab a vessel and toss the bricks in the vessel. And then fire the vessel in the pit kiln. And that will fire all the bricks in the vessel at once. So that's what we're going to be doing. Once again, enough clay. And since we're going to be firing up the pit kiln, we might as well make sure we have a full pit kiln. So we're going to make a, enough bricks to make... We should make extra. So let's make enough to make eight brick blocks. That's going to require 20 bricks. And since we're going to have a little bit of extra space, we should probably make two more small vessels or these vessels. That we can then store. Oh, actually, I broke two ingot molds. So we should probably make two ingot molds also. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make some extra ingot molds and fire them all together. Oh, and uh, the silkworms are spreading a bit more. This one now has five, uh, four blocks fully. Yeah, four blocks fully infested and one being infested. This has moved on to a third block. This one still hasn't done anything. That that one's being lazy. And this has finally moved on to another block and I just fell in a hole. So I'm still out here looking for clay. And, you know, as I mentioned in the first episode, we want to keep an eye out for the different types of flowers that only grow on clay. But we've got trees here. Fruit trees. So let's look at these quickly. If we grab our axe, we can go up to the tree. And you see how it turns like this? If you break this branch here, you'll get a sapling. These saplings can then be planted elsewhere to grow a new tree. So we're going to take this sapling back with us all the way to our base and try to grow ourselves a tree. It will take quite a while to grow. It's not an instant thing, but that will give us a green apple tree, which we can use, of course, to grow apples, make cider. But they ha have a chance of dying and not growing. So while I'm here, I'm going to take this one 
also. All right, so that gives us two saplings. And I think they have about 40% chance of dying. So we may or may not get an apple tree out of this. But yeah, that's how you collect saplings from trees. So you can grow your own trees. Here we go. There should be clay right under here somewhere. Clay loam. Nice. All right, so this should get us more than enough clay to get us going making more bricks. Well, not more bricks. We don't have any bricks yet. So making bricks and also making a few more clay items that we can fire up so we're not wasting resources in the pit kiln. Oh, we got green beans also. Might as well collect some of these. I've already eaten some green beans, but you know, more food. Ooh, that was a little framey, wasn't it? I should look over here for more clay so I know to come back in the future. All right, I think I'm going to be good on clay for a while. There's some clay there. There's a bit of clay here. If we look at the map, there's clay there. Uh, there. Up here. There's a bit of redstone over there, too. So it looks like it's spawning around water a lot. And while it does require decently high rainfall in order for clay to generate, I've had it generate away from water in the past. So it's a little... Hmm. Not odd, but it's OK. It is a little odd that I'm not finding it inland, but I'm finding it next to water. There's more clay right here. But hey, at least I know where to look for it. I'm in this sort of marshy area. Does it say what type of biome I'm in specifically? Low altitude continent? Eh, not really. Annual rainfall needs to be above 150, I believe. But yeah, so we're finding clay over here. That's good. Uh, I need to avoid going that way since there are dire wolves. And if the wolves are bad news, dire wolves are even worse news. Before we end today, I want to quickly cover animal husbandry. So I made up some fences that we can put down here. And we're going to go grab some of the nanny goats that are in the forest just over there. I did not make enough fences. This is going to be a much smaller fence than I planned it. Thankfully, the Macross fences have a pretty good return. I did that backwards. There we go. We get eight fences for three logs and three sticks. Let's complete that one there. And then let's go find some nanny goats. We've got a few. That's a four. We got a few down here and we have grain that we can attract them with. And of course, Nanny Goat is dangerously close to the dire wolf over here. If I can attract her without attracting the wolf. There we go. So we got the Nanny Goat following us. First off, we can feed them. Make a new friend. When we do, it increases their familiarity with us. She is now at familiarity of six. When you get them up to 18, which takes three feedings, you can start getting resources from them. So nanny goat, I can well, milk for goat cheese. If it was a sheep, I could shear the sheep. Cows give you cow's milk. Ducks, quail, and chicken will start laying eggs that you can collect. If we want to start breeding the nanny goat, we're, well, we're going to start breeding goats in general. We're going to need to find a billy goat also. But yeah, let's get this back all the way to our base. And we can start working on increasing her familiarity, finding a billy goat, and then start getting ourselves a bunch of goats. And also some milk and cheese in the future in the future. There we go. And now under the familiarity, you have size and that's the actual size of the animal. The bigger the animal is, the more resources it will give on butchery. So a size one pig will give you very little meat, whereas a size 20 pig will give you a lot of meat. And then you have wear and tear. Every time you use the animal, let's harvest wool from them, 
breed them, milk them, it will add to their wear and tear. When they reach 100%, they are no longer good for collecting resources from. The only thing you can really do with them is butcher them. So we've got a goat now. And unlike, unlike vanilla goats, they will not jump out of pens. So she's safe to leave here. And we need to feed her every day. If you don't feed her, her familiarity will drop by two per day. Once you reach 18, you can start using them. And once wild animals, well, wild caught, reach 32, the familiarity will no longer drop. 35 is the highest familiarity you can get for a wild animal. An animal that is bred in captivity. So get a nanny goat and a billy goat together. Get a baby goat, a kid. You can get that kid's familiarity up to 100% while it's still a juvenile. And if you get up to 100%, depending on the animal, sheeps for example, you will get double yield when you shear them. So now we have our goats. Well, now we have a goat. And we still have a lot to do. But our clay is done. All right, bricks, final bit for today. We have water in here. We open that up, grab our lime that's in our inventory. For every one mil bucket, you add two flux and it turns into lime water. We can then grab some sand. Let's grab a whole stack of sand. Toss that in, seal it, and after eight hours, this will turn into mortar. We can then use that mortar to combine the bricks to make the brick blocks. While that's happening, let's grab a few more logs. Because what we're going to need to do is once the mortar is done and we make our brick blocks, is we stick logs in here, we light it on fire, and the heat of heating this will cure these from uncured into fully cured. And then we can use them to cook. Oh, and here, if you look on the JEI, it tells you how long until, until the barrel recipe is done. And you know what? I said we were going to do one last thing. Let's let's uh, let's do something else. I want to make another barrel. We can then take this barrel and go down to the water. Because right now I've been bucketing up one bucket at a time. If you right click. You fill the entire barrel. So now we got 10 liters of water in here. And just like carrying the anvil, it makes us exhausted. If we have two, we won't be able to move. But now I can bring this up here. Stick it down there. We can make beer. We take water and we place barley flour into it. One barley flour per half millibucket. So we're going to need 20. So we're going to need to grind most of this grain down. I did not mean to do that. Okay. Um, do not shift click with a piece of grain in your hand. So I'm going to grind this down into flour and then we can put it into the barrel there and start brewing beer. Because once we make beer, oh, well, we can drink the beer, but then we can also put cherries in it or other fruit and make vinegar for storing and preserving food. So I have nine. I want one more. Give us 10 ounces, which should be enough to make 10 liters of beer. Yep, there we go. It's fermenting and it will take two days. And then once it's done, we'll have 10 liters of beer. And then we have to pull out. I think we need to pull out uh, two liters. Yes, because we can turn we can turn alcohol into vinegar with half an ounce of peat. Well, half an ounce of fruit per quarter millibucket. Oh, our mortar's done. All right, that gives us eight brick blocks. We then can place them surrounding this. 
think I can use a torch. Yes, you can. Okay. And now the now the top and bottom oven are firing. Once this is done, it will convert all of these over into the oven oven blocks. Yes, the oven blocks. They'll be done. And we need to make a peel. I just I completely forgot about it. We need a bowl and a stick. And a bowl we can make. We need glue for that one. There we go. The ovens are done. And so we can now start cooking food on this oven. We can also pick this one up. Place it down. And grab our cook pot. Because I accidentally broke our fireplace before. We can shift click that on top. And now we can cook. Just like we did before on the fire pit. Only on top as a stove. And later on, when we make a grill, we can put the grill on top. When we make the, the Farmer's Delight cook pot, we can put it up here. And we can do a couple things. And I think we're going to call it an end here on today's bonus episode. Next episode, we're going to look at, well, this loom over here. So we can get started on making clothing. That sheep back there, I'll show you how we got it. And how to butcher it using Butcher's Delight. And I think we'll terraform just a little bit. So we can set up a water wheel in the river here set up a mill and safely dispose of the dust that the millstone is called millstone that the millstone creates so we don't end up blowing up half our base. And maybe you'll look at fishing too, since fishing is a little different in terra craft than it is in vanilla. So until then, thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Later. Hello there. Welcome back to terra craft hard rock. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We're just grinding down a bit more tetrahedrite to make some more copper so we can make some bronze today. But as I'm sitting here working away, I heard our beer finished up. We now have 10 buckets of beer and it is currently aging into aged beer, which if we check quickly, doesn't say here, but you can drink aged beer and get a buff. If you give me a second, I'll figure out which one. All right. Uh, you know, I'll just put this up on screen, but aged beer gives you the potion effect absorption too which effectively gives you extra hearts. But we do not want aged beer. So we're going to open the barrel. We're going to grab our bucket and we want 16 fruit. So we're taking all these cherries while they're still good because they won't be for long. And we're going to transfer some of this beer over into this barrel because we're going to seal the fruit in this barrel. You need four fruit per bucket. 16 ounces is 32 fruit, 32 divided by four, eight. We can seal these and this will turn into vinegar and this will take eight hours. And once we have vinegar, we can use it to make brine, which we need for preserving food. And we can also use it to pickle food and store the food in the vinegar. I made another bucket here. We need to go get salt water to make brine. And you could find halite, crush it down into salt and then boil it soak it in water. Or the reason I like living by oceans is you walk out into the ocean and you click the barrel to get the salt water. We do have sharks in this mod pack, so we uh, don't want to travel too far into the water, but I do need it to switch the biome over to ocean. I'm not seeing it switch to ocean. Oh, there we go. The tooltip says salt water. So now we have a barrel of salt water. Oh, okay. So sometimes it's salt water right up to the shore. Sometimes there's a ring of fresh water next to salt water. In this case, don't actually have to worry about that. So now we have a barrel of salt water. So once the vinegar is done, we can combine the vinegar with the salt water here to turn it into brine. And I can show you how to preserve food. <laughs> At least preserve food better. All right, vinegar is done. So what we do now is we have to take one bucket of the salt water out and we really can't use it for anything. So I'm just going to dump it. At least for now, we can, you know, we've got plenty of salt water right over there. So it doesn't matter too much. Then we take one bucket of vinegar out and we combine it with the salt water and that turns it into brine. And now with brine, let's grab eh, let's do the cabbage. Make some sauerkraut. 
toss that in here and seal it and it's going to start brining it's good for 16 days right now and in four hours it will be brined cabbage which will extend the uh, shelf life well that's happening we're just going to wash a bit more ore but now i point i don't remember if i pointed this out last episode we have the two sluices right next to each other if we toss the dust to be right there so it's kind of touching both sluices they both pick up the dust and so you have them next to each other if you set it up so that it's about in between the two or you can feed multiple sluices from one pile and this way you don't have to figure out where you have to toss the pile to feed that one and to feed this one without them combining if it's in between it'll feed both our cabbage is done and it does consume some of the brine but now it is brined and it's good for 20 days if we now toss this in here it will pickle it was 16 days and after brining it it's up to 20 days now we're pickling it once it's done pickling it should be somewhere close to 30 days i think outside the barrel but in the barrel it will have a much longer shelf life and i got asked the other day if drinking beer will fill your water needs so let's find out yes it does doesn't fill it as much as drinking the boiled water since the boiled water will looks like boiled water will completely refill your thirst bar no matter how low it is but yes you can drink beer and it meets your water need all right we were at 20 days before preserved in the vinegar the cabbage is good for a month and 18 days so that's 58 days outside it's good for 40 days so we can store it in the vinegar we could take it out of the vinegar toss it in here and now it's good for two months and 21 days that's how you preserve food even longer you can do it with fruit you cannot do it with grains you can do it with vegetables you can do it with meat meat you can also smoke the different preservation methods stack so if you uh you have to brine the meat first then i think you can smoke it and then you can pickle it and then preserve it in vinegar and that will extend the life of the meat with each subsequent preservation method i cut this for time last week but when i was out exploring looking for more clay i came across quite a few sheep so i was going to collect said sheep and start bringing them home and while Gathering up the sheep, I got a little too close to some wolves, who proceeded to chase me. Well, I managed to escape the wolves because about uh, halfway through chase me, they decide humans are a little too stringy, I'd rather go for the rack of lamb. Hence, the sheep behind me. When they killed this sheep, it dropped a bladder, which we need to make a water flask, both the leather and the iron flask, which will hold five drinks of water. The iron flask will hold two buckets of water. Five drinks is half a bucket. Once we get some leather, we're going to be making a leather flask because it's much better water storage than the jug that we have because, well, the jug only holds one drink or 100 millibuckets, and the jug has a chance to break. I think it's 2% per use. I've been lucky so far. Of course, now that I say that, I'm knocking on the wood of my desk because you know it's going to break the next time I try drinking from it. Oh yeah, so we need leather and then we'll make the water flask and the water flasks can be repaired because they do have a durability. It also dropped seven rennet. And this is what we need to make milk curds, well, curdled milk and then milk curds. We're going to be using this in the near future once we have a little more goat's milk. It also dropped two bits of wool. Now, in terraforma craft, normally when you kill a sheep or any woolly animal, which includes alpacas and I believe muskox, it will drop a woolly hide, a sheepskin hide, which when you scrape it will give you wool and a hide. When the wolves killed this sheep, it just dropped the wool. So I took the wool and I made a spindle. Spindles made by making a spindle head, which is a clay mold recipe, which you then have to fire. And what you do is you put the spindle in your crafting grid along with the wool and it turns into wool yarn. This wool yarn we can now make using a loom into wool cloth. 
And that's what this is. This is a loom. Recipe is pretty easy. Seven lumber and one stick. And you can combine multiple things on the loom. We have the wool yarn, but you can also do string and jute fibers. We haven't processed our jute down into fibers yet, but we could do that. The way the loom works is you have to click the string or the yarn or the, or the fibers on. And as you see, it's got a weaving progress. We have to load this up. For silk, it costs, it takes 24 string. For yarn, it takes 16. And for jute fibers, I believe it's eight. And then once you have the loom full, you have to hold down your right click and you will cycle through the loom slowly weaving the string together. I have to do this for it to process through all 24 cycles. And then we will get silk cloth. Or if you're doing wool, you'll get the wool cloth. And if you're doing jute, you'll get burlap cloth. And there we go. Now we got silk cloth. That's how you make things like, well, that's how you're going to make silk cloth to make things like the create sales. Silk cloth, burlap cloth, wool cloth. So yeah, we're going to need those to make create sales in the future. Wool rolls look like we can make them from wool blocks. You make wool blocks by combining four wool to get eight wool blocks. So actually converting the wool blocks, um, wool cloth into wool blocks, which gives you eight wool and then cutting them on a sewing table will give you four rolls. It's much more efficient to do it that way to make sales. So that's a little tip. So you get 32 sales for what would normally cost you four sales. Anyway, with the silk cloth, we can make cheesecloth, which we're going to need to make milk curds. We can make a chisel and bits bag, a sleeping bag, which will allow us to sleep through the night. Also, I believe they are used for the traveler's backpack. Yep. But we're also going to need them to make ourselves some silk clothing. Silk clothing will keep you cool in the summer, whereas wool will keep you warm during the winter. So we might want to try to save up and make some silk clothing before too long just to help keep us cool. Oh, wow. We got super lucky. So we have three queens and it must have happened yesterday. If you notice now, we have a one in seven chance of getting a new queen in our hive. This hive has no queens. So what we can do, it's nighttime. Let's pull this queen out and put it in this one here. Now we have a one in 28 chance that a new queen will generate in this hive. I mentioned before, bees have a uh, have abilities. This one here has a production of one and a natural restoration of one. That means it will generate flowers. This one has a hardiness of two and a calmness of one. The hardiness means that it will be able to produce honey at colder temperatures. Calmness will it will be calmer. It's less like the sting you if you pull it out during the day. You can avoid the need of calmness by always removing the frames at night. This one has hardiness of three, calmness of three. We don't really want calmness. So what we're going to do is we're going to let more bees generate and we're going to try to breed the queens by removing queens that have traits that we don't want. We want production. Natural restoration is not bad, but it's not really necessary. So this bee will probably go into a special hive of her own where I can grow flowers around that hive specifically and try to breed up a better natural restoration so she can generate me flowers uh, without me having to explore for them. We do want hardiness. We want productivity. We don't need calmness. Mutation helps spread abilities, but once you maxed out, it's kind of worthless. So I want to try to not breed mutation into this set. We could do fertility, which will increase the fertility of the beef of the queens and therefore better chance of producing new queens. And whichever one it is that gives you fertilizer or automatically fertili fertilizes your crops. We're going to want that. We're going to leave this and uh, hopefully in the next day or so we will have a few more queens and then I can scrape one of the frames for you to show you how that works. And then we can start on actual leather working. 
which means I'm going to want to go get some hides. Uh, but that means that we are very close to leather, which means we'll be able to make a bellows soon. And once we have a bellows, we don't need a pit kiln anymore because we could fire all of our clay items in our forge. All right. So now that I'm all excited and happy about having bees and finally being able to start on leather working and the bloomery and all that fun stuff, we actually need to see about making tools and also getting started with create because create is going to be a handful, especially with pollution. Oh man, as I was checking them, new bees arrived. Okay, so we have hardiness one, calmness one, hardiness two, productivity one, natural restoration one, and nothing. So we're gonna scrape that height, uh, that frame in a moment. Up here we have calmness three and hardiness three. Again, we don't really want the calmness. Calmness three, hardiness one, crop affinity. That's the one that gives crops, fer uh, fertilizes crops. We want that. And this is calmness and crop affinity two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another beehive. Of course, I'm going to stick these two crop affinity ones in that one. And we're not really going to worry about it. They will constantly fertilizing our crops. That's what they're going to do. But this one here, it's got nothing in it or uh, it's got no traits. So we grab our knife. Now we could either pull it out, but it's now daytime. The bees will get angry at us. You can see that they are these particle effects. We right click on the frame. Does that hurt the bee? Yes, the queen is now dead. But we now have the beeswax we need, which means we can make some treated lumber. And uh, because we are getting ready to actually make leather, I went out to find ourselves some new wood types because well, the wood we have around us, we have white cedar, looks very nice, useless for making leather, rosewood, same deal, and ash. So I found some chestnut trees all the way over here. It's about a two day trip. Uh, one day there, one day back. What we can do now with these chestnut logs is if we soak them in a barrel of water, one log to one barrel will give us tannin. We need a tannin, of course, to soak our hides in to tan the hides into leather. So we need chestnut logs. Other options include birch logs, oak logs, sequoia logs. And I'm sure there's another one I'm forgetting, but not all logs can be used to make tannin. So make sure before you start making leather, you get the logs you need. First, let's make the treated lumber. So we need this in order to make the treated greenhouse if we want to go for a tier one greenhouse. There's almost no point in making a tier one greenhouse unless you're living someplace where it's absolutely always cold and there is almost no grow season. With the treated greenhouse, you can start growing crops even in the winter. Uh, of course, if you're living in that sort of cold climate, getting your hands on beeswax is going to be near impossible. So <laughs> um, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? We need to make a mixing bowl. We need glue. To make glue, we need quick lime. Sorry, not quick lime. Lime water. That's flux in water and bone meal. Bone meal we get from grinding bones down in the quarn. We can get it from cutting food on a cutting board, grinding bones in a millstone or the create crushing wheel and eventually the immersive engineering crusher, which is the most efficient method. So I'm going to go Let's, uh, I need, I need more lumber. I need to make at least two more barrels. I need a barrel specifically for quick lime or not quick lime. I keep saying it wrong. Lime water. We're going to need a lime water barrel and then we're going to need a barrel to make tannin in. And again, you can completely fill up the barrel just by walking to a water source and right clicking it. We are overburdened. We cannot move. We can stick one barrel on our backpack slot and move. You can also use the, uh, what's this called? The offhand slot from vanilla or the utility slots in from the inventory mod. This is kind of cheaty because it doesn't take into account that you're actually carrying something that you're not supposed to be carrying or 
you're carrying multiple or something. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, you can do it. It's just, I feel like it's cheating, so I'm not going to do it. All right, so we're going to need 10 chestnut locks that we can soak in here. That'll turn into tannin. And then in this one, we're going to turn it into lime water. I'm going to need, I think it's two flux per bar bucket. Yes, so I need 20 flux, which is almost all the flux we have. But we have plenty of dolosite that we can turn into dolosite, dolomite, dolomite that we can turn into flux. So we have that. Let's grab a bone. Oh, I picked up some cherry saplings while I was out and I picked up chestnut seeds so I can grow my own chestnut trees. Bones instead of corn, just like everything else. Spin the grind wheel, uh, the handstone twice. And we have plenty of bone meal. You can use bone meal as a fertilizer. You see it's got phosphorus 10%. That means if I applied it to a farm plot, doesn't really matter. The phosphorus went up by 10%. Now, uh, beets, what do beets need? Beets take potassium. So if you put potassium in, the phosphorus will actually go up as the potassium goes down. And so would the nitrogen. But let's run over here. We toss those in there, seal it up. And in eight hours, we'll have glue. And then we can make our mixing bowl and get started on the next steps of making leather. So like I said, once we have leather, we can make a bellows, which will allow us to work the forge at its max temperature. It will, of course, make us hotter since we'll be standing next to the forge. But uh, well, one thing at a time. So we're going to make four ingots of bronze. We're going to melt it into the vessel here to alloy it, just like what we did to make the bismuth bronze for the hammer. And then we're going to make a few tools. I want to make a new axe since ours is getting a little worn down. I'm going to want to make some tool rods so we can make some hooks, uh, both a fishing hook, but also a metal hook which we can use then to hang our sheep up to then butcher it to get meat. So that's going to be two of the ingots I make. I should probably make a bronze knife instead of keep using stone knives. Oh, and then we'll make a bronze hammer. All right, we've got our first two ingots about ready. This one is eh, close enough. Melt that at 950, so let's do just under nine. That's close enough. All right. So first we're going to want to make a bronze hammer. We need punch last and shrink not last. Okay. I need to go that way, that, and of course it's perfect. There we go. It's well forged. So it's not great, but it's not bad. Well forged, you get the equivalent of efficiency one and unbreaking one. And if you get poor forged, you could toss it right back into the forge, melt it down and try again. Uh, let's make an ax and let's actually do it good this time. So we want upset third to last, hit second to last and punch last. So we're going to want upset, hit, punch upset hit punch perfectly forged how do you like that so now we have a perfectly forged axe and our well forged bronze hammerhead by the way as i said you use durability every time you click one of these on the hammerhead so that's why we want a bronze one it's going to have a lot more durability than a stone one we could make black bronze black bronze is has more durability than this, the tin alloy bronze, but you know, it's, it's only a hundred or so durability more. It's not insignificant, but it's not worth worrying about too much. Draw, draw, hit. Okay. So we're going to need to like go all the way over this way. Draw, draw. It, that was not far enough. Draw, draw, 
hit. Ooh, I should have done a light hit. And now it's worked and it's poorly worked. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap out. We're going to go back to the bronze rod here. Draw, draw, bend. And it got cold. So what we're going to do now is this one will go here. This one will go up there. That's for the knife. We messed up. So we're going to let that melt. It's going to go back into an ingot mold and now pull out and put it back into the forge. And then we can try working it some more. Rods don't get the bonus of well forged and whatnot. So you don't have to worry about messing them up multiple times. So we're going to want to turn this into a meat hook. Bend not last, hit not last, punch last. Bend, not last. And now we're going to do this. Not hot enough to work. They cool down faster. They heat up faster because they're less metal, but they also cool down faster because they're less metal. There we go. We want to make a fishing rod. Any, any, not last. Okay, so this makes it easy. Relatively. Boom, perfectly forged. There we go. Now we've got our knife and pull that out. Let the forge cool down. We are almost out of charcoal, so I have to finish chopping enough wood to fill this up and then we'll light that up. Now we have a hook. We can hang this from the ceiling somewhere. Maybe it has to be a proper ceiling and not just thatch ceiling. So we'll look at that in a minute. But then we can hang up our sheep. I forgot to mention something useful when forging. You can cool down ingots or any metal item quicker by sticking it in a barrel. This, of course, isn't useful if you're actually trying to forge an item. But let's say I'm working with zinc. Zinc has a melting temperature of 420 degrees. If I am casting zinc out into ingots, I'm using the forge. So the forge burns at 1300, which means after a while, the temperature of the zinc in the ingot mold is going to be 1350. And you cannot pull the zinc out until it is under 420. So you can take the ingot mold with the molten ink in it, um, molten zinc in it, and put it into a barrel filled with water. You'd stick it in this slot here and it would slowly consume the water as it lowers the temperature. And we're talking about using up one millibucket per every few degrees. So it's not like you put one ingot in and your barrel's going to be empty. A full barrel will last you a decent amount of time. Okay, butcher's delight. Let's try this. I put a ash plank up. Yes, so you can attach the meat hook to a full block. The thatch doesn't count as a full block, a ash plank does. We can then pick up the carcass, left clicking to break it. And this tells me it still has 22 days. Hang dead animals on hooks from Butcher's Delight. Small animals, chickens and rabbits, ducks, quail, can be placed on the ground and cut with a knife. So we want to do this, and then with a knife, There we go. We butchered the entirety of the sheep. That gave us some sheep rack, which is good for 11 days. Gave us some sheep legs, which is good for 11 days. Some raw mutton, good for seven days. And sheep loin, which is good for 11 days. Each of these are something I can, well, I'm going to need it cook, but when I eat them, they add to my overall health. I'm going to just toss them in here for now. I'll be making something with them very soon. We also have this fur of sheep, which I can scrape, like I was saying before, to get 
fur and let and uh, a hide. So now we have a large raw hide and our wool. So let's grab the treated wood. Grab the glue we made. And we'll make our mixing bowl. All right, that's the mixing bowl. That is not everything. We need to make a spoon as well. Stick, lumber, knife. We do not want to use the treated lumber. That's a uh, precious resource. That gives us a spoon. So now when we put the mixing bowl down, we can put the spoon in it. And when we have items in there, we click the spoon and it will stir. So now with this rawhide, we need to seal it in a barrel of lime water to turn it into a soaked hide. Well, we happen to have a lot of lime water here, so we can just do that. That's going to take eight hours. This wool I mentioned earlier using the spindle. I can show you this again now that we actually have wool. Each time you do this, it consumes one durability from the spindle. Spindle has, I think, about 80 durability or it might be 64. It's not a ton, but it's enough to get the job done. Let's move on to the last real part for today while we wait for the hides to soak because I do need to show you something with the hides once it's done soaking. We're going to make a water wheel from Create and our first millstone. I'm going to need to go get another. Yeah, I don't have it. I'm going to need to go get some more hard, um, raw stone to make the millstone. Oh, I can use hardened stone too. Well, that's useful. But we need to first make the water wheel. The water wheel requires andesite alloy. That's going to require us using the forge again. We're almost out of charcoal, so you know what? I'm going to put that on hold. I'm going to cook myself a little more food. I'm going to go chop some trees, and then we'll get to uh, get to making the create stuff. Okay, so we're just about full with our wood in here. If I put that there, put that there. Did not want to do that. And then dirt there. And now this is full of wood. Log piles it is going to burn just like when I made the little pit of uh, charcoal pit in the ground. Only now it's a three by three. So we're going to get quite a bit more charcoal. Not a ton, but enough. So that's just going to run there. The soak tide is done. We can pull it out. What we now do is we put it onto the log here. We grab our knife and we right click. And when we right click, you see it turned from pink to a pale flesh color. Uh, well, I guess the pink's more of a flesh color. It turns a more lighter shade. We want to scrape off all the pink. It's 16 in total. And now it's a scrape tide. So now we can break it. And we have the scrape tide. The scrape type we then soak in salt water. Do I have an empty barrel over here? <laughs> no. Now we toss this in here and this will become a prepared hide. Once it's a prepared hide, that's when we have to soak it in tannin. And then from there, we need to make some seed oil water. Seed oil water. We need to crush five seeds down into a seed paste. Boil it in our pot with a bucket of water. And then we can use the mixing bowl to make the next um, to mix it all together. So we place these in there. Grind it down. Ooh, stove top pot can only take four. I don't know if this is going to work. We'll find out. Oh, we're getting two per instead of one per. No, that does not work. Okay. So. I believe our friend up here who is lost somewhere. Yep, has a pot that I can steal. And there we go. Now it's boiling into the seed oil water, which we're going to need to toss in the mixing bowl. Oh, and I was looking through. 
these, the rack of lamb and everything, once we get a cutting board, we can chop it down and get a lot more meat out of it. So we are going to want to eat these individually after cooking them, of course, to get the hearts. But we're also going to want to chop them up to get more mutton. So our prepared hide is done. We take it out of here and we toss it in with our tannin. And when it's done, we can then toss it in with our seed water oil we just made, turn it into an oiled hide, which we then scrape into large leather, like I said before. Our hide is done. We pull it out of there, toss it in there. We grab our barrel, our bucket of seed water. We add it in and we click it once. It'll stir in its own. You can take your hands off. You can walk away. I'm going to make a little bit of soup. Shift click, pull it out. Now it's a large oiled hide. Put that back on the log. And scrape again, just like we did when we were making a scrape tide. And you can see the color difference as we go. Now we have large leather, which we can put into a sewing table to cut down. I don't have a sewing table yet. That'll be next episode. But now we have leather, or at least what we have to what we need to make leather. I went and got some rhyolite so we can now make ourselves a Millstone. What we need to do is we need to make a gearbox. To make a gearbox, we need to make an andesite casing. We need to apply a small gear to an andesite casing. So we need to make andesite alloy. To make the andesite alloy, we're going to need andesite and zinc. Andesite cobble is less efficient than andesite loose rocks. That's useful to know. So 36 andesite and 8 zinc. Yes, that should be good. That allows us to make for andesite alloy. All right, so while the andesite is cooking down, I need to make a small gear. A small gear is a, if I remember correctly, a slab on the chopping block. Yes. So that gives us what we need to make the gearbox. Almost, we need to make an andesite casing and a stripped log. We can grab Have some logs right here. We're going to need to make a water wheel. Water wheel requires a shaft and a large gear, and the large gear is made from a plank. There you go. We got andesite alloy. We need to heat this up. Andesite alloy melts at 930 degrees Celsius. We got to heat this up a fair bit. There we go. And this alley is done. And to show you what I meant about cooling stuff down, open this up, toss that in. Drained 28 millibuckets to finish cooling that down. You can toss this whole thing in, cools down pretty quick. All right. So first thing inside alley goes onto the strip log. Turns it into a casing. We then apply the small gear to the casing. It is now a gearbox. We then take one of our ry raw rhylorite or phylorite, whichever one we have here, and we click the gearbox on to turn it into a millstone. All right, to make a shaft, we need to put a support down, right click it with a andesite alloy. Then we take the large gear, we click it on, and now it's a large gear, which we then wrap in lumber to turn into a water wheel. Boy, this is a little expensive because we need to do another one of those. We we'll need another gearbox. A little shortcut here. I was going to make a slab using four planks, but what we could do instead is take the one plank, put it down, grab our chisel, grab our hammer, Put the hammer in our offhand. And then the key bindings for this is middle click. It is middle click, but it's not doing it for me right now. Okay, I changed the period. So now we can do that. Right click. We now have two planks. 
or two slabs. Toss that on. So now we have a water wheel, a millstone, and a shaft. And our gearbox. We can convert the gearbox to a vertical one. Did I, I you know what? I don't think I needed the gearbox. <laughs> the water in Terraforma Craft flows. I've mentioned this before. You can place the water wheel in the water and the flowing current of the water will turn the water wheel. We have a small gear here. We need to click a shaft onto the small gear or kick, click the small gear onto a shaft in order to turn it into a cog wheel. And my jug broke. Didn't I call it earlier today? So now the small water wheel is running in the water. It's not producing much power, but it's producing power. Now, I'm not going to do this permanently, but just to show you what we can do, we can attach the cog, the gearbox there, put the small cog there, and attach the millstone there. If we put a wooden hopper underneath this or a uh, yeah, wooden hopper. We could do a shoot eventually. We don't have shoots yet. But now I can go grab. Okay, now that we actually have the correct version of tetrahedrite, go over here, drop it down, and the millstone will grind it for us instead of us needing to do it by hand at the quarn. Of course, we can speed up the water wheel same way you would with create anyway going from a large wheel to a small wheel. There we go. We've got our dirty tetrahedrite dust from the millstone. This will produce dust. Uh, not this dust, but the explodey kind of pollution dust. If that falls into the water, the water will be polluted and turn yellow. You can fix that by placing a block in its spot or by getting a bucket, even a wooden bucket, getting water and then placing it over top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build into the side of the mountain here or the side of the cliff face. I'm going to build a mill and I'm going to have a method for capturing dust. And unfortunately, I am running out of time for this episode. So that will be covered in next episode. But I will give you the basic idea. We're going to build a trench underneath the the millstone there. We're going to put trapdoors underneath the millstone so that when the trapdoors produce dust, the dust will fall onto the trapdoors, falls through the trapdoors, and go down into a pit, a trench. And at the bottom, they will, they will collect. Eventually, they will start to drop as items, which we can then pick up with either hoppers or by going down there and picking them up manually. And then we can use those for creative excavation. Or what we could do is we can stick dirt down there and the dust will convert dirt into path blocks and then into gravel blocks and then into coarse dirt blocks. And that's just no way of using up the dust. We've got a millstone. We've got a water wheel. We've got leather. We've got bees and we forged a lot too. Yeah, I'd say it was actually rather productive. I also recorded a whole lot of footage, so I'm going to have a hard time editing again. Okay, well, this episode's getting a little long in the tooth, and before I outstay my welcome, I think it's time to end. Next episode, we'll cover Create. We'll make the sewing table so we can actually get some leather, make the bellows, and uh, figure out something else to do. Until then, thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Later. Hello there, and welcome back to Terraforma Craft Hard Rock. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Last episode, we made a fishing pole and we made our little crate stuff down there. But I actually ran out of time to record, so we had to cut it a little short. Although the episode was a little longer than I had planned. But uh, so today we're going to actually grab that fishing rod that's over there somewhere. And I'm going to show you fishing in terraforma craft because it is different than fishing in vanilla. Just a little bit. And well, I've been terraforming because I'm going to build a proper farm over here. So we can make use of the water, have high hydration and low hydration farms. 
and we're going to start building a proper mill so we can set up everything on the inside and we'll take care of building some chutes and a uh, a trench for collecting dust so we don't have to worry about our base exploding <laughs> but there's a neat little trick in this mod pack you can claim chunks there we go shift click right click control click control click control left click to claim it control right click to unselect it so if you're on a server you want to claim your chunks because that makes it so that no one can break anything in your claim chunks aside from you but what's useful and kind of an exploit is if you claim these chunks here and you have pollution over here and or a creeper and they decide they want to blow up they can't destroy anything in your claimed chunks it's a uh, grief protection we don't have endermen in terraforma craft so you don't have to worry about endermen picking up blocks but you know creepers explode they still leave holes dust explosions will leave holes you claim the chunks no holes so I've just claimed these chunks here were our little bases for now. Uh, the base will be bigger. In fact, you can kind of see the outline there. That that's that's far too small. Two chunks wide. No, it's probably going to be more like that by the time I'm done. But we'll see how big I actually get it done. But for now, I'm working over here. I got to clean out all this gravel and I'm making up. Although I hate walking on it, a ton of bricks. Because then we can use these bricks, the uh, mud bricks, like what we got here, to build like a retaining wall and uh, stairs and whatnot over here to just to make the area look a bit nicer. So I'm going to get to doing that and I'll bring it back once I'm ready. Inventory management, that's starting to become a bit of an issue. We have uh, limited storage in these chests. I, of course, have limited inventory until I can make the upgrade additional slot pouch which we need leather and crushed gems for okay i can crush gems in a quarn we need to make the sewing table you know what let's do a couple things right away let's make a sewing table let's make some drawers some of these uh functional storage storage drawers and we're gonna make the cutting board so i can cut down the lamb parts that we got since I didn't show this in the last episode, but if we take these lamb parts, we can cut them on a cutting board and get a lot of meat out of them. So for the cutting board, we just need to lumber. Well, uh, pressure plate or cutting board. We want the cutting board. We're going to want two chests. And wrap that again. Oh, that gives us two. Okay. So that gives us two storage drawers and it overburdens us when we carry them. So that is good to know. I'm just going to stick them right here for now. And I'm going to dump dirt there. And I think I'm going to dump like gravel there. And so I can manage that in a moment. Cutting board. Let's grab this so we're not having it on the ground. Let's grab the lamb loin there we go had to have nothing in my offhand to do that but now we have a lot more raw mutton a sheep backpack okay we can salt the mutton i don't have salt we can cut it down into feed bits for feeding opossums we can use it to make soap we can cook it into cooked mutton we can pickle and brine it which will help it last a lot longer. It's got seven days left. You know what? Let's cut these other lamb bits down and try that. That gives us 16 ounces of mutton. So we can seal that in there. That's going to brine over the next four hours. Now, I put the cabbage in here and I didn't read the tooltip properly. I thought it said two months. It actually said years. So I put it back in here. I'm going to have to pull it out. We're going to need to make more vinegar. But uh, yeah, it's got 11 months in the vinegar. So um, 
We need more beer. I also need more barrels. So it looks like the tallow only lasts about 15 days since I just had to relamp, relight my lamp. But that's better than a torch that burns out after two. All right, so I have everything here. Let's make our sewing table. We do that. That gives us the sewing table. We can then put the leather in there and grab our uh, shears. And that allows us to cut it into leather. Now that one gives us four. Oh, me and four is not bad. I need to make... Well, this requires leather sheets, which we put in again. One leather turns into three. We would need two for that. We need... We need a leather flask side, which requires another sheet and strips and yarn. We need two of those. And I want to make a bellows as well. The bellows is going to require three leather by itself. Yes. Okay, so we don't have enough leather to make everything. We can make... I need to chop more wood, but we can make the bellows. I'm just thinking, do I want to make the bellows first or do I want to make something else first? There we go. Turn the rabbit hide into a small hide. Then we can soak the small hides and start turning these into leather also. Because once these are done, the small hides. Oh, I need three small hides to make an oiled hide. We each turn into one leather, so we can use those in a bit. Let's make... Yeah, no, we don't have enough leather yet to make anything other than a bellow. So that's my next task, I think. Meanwhile, the project I've been working on putting in this retaining wall and resetting up our farmland is going nicely. We've got our low hydration soil up here. I'm going to put another wall like this back here. I might extend it in a block or two that way, though. If we go down here, we've got our high hydration soil. This way we can grow stuff like potatoes or anything else that needs high hydration down right next to the water. These will be replaced. I'm going to build a dock over here once I find either sycamore or maple because I like the look of those woods better. And yeah, low hydration up here for everything else. And then we can do additional farms like, well, over there is going to be our mill. So that's our next project that I need to work on off camera is building the mill. And I need to figure out what resources I want to use to build it. I was thinking I could use some of our limestones that we are getting from filters in the water, the strainers. Because limestone bricks look fairly nice. But I also need to make a whole lot more andesite alloy because we're going to need more shafts. And got plenty of andesite cobble here. But I'm just about out of zinc. Yeah. But we have a zinc deposit over here. So I'm going to have to go over there, find it and dig down and start collecting. But once these are done, I will have enough leather to make a leather flask, which is good because then I can go carry a bunch of drinks with me instead of just the one jug. Well, this is where I found my zinc deposit. It's a little deeper under the black sand beach and black sand does not look well black sandstone does not look like it's affected by gravity so i can dig out and hollow out under here and not have to worry about cave-in so long as i remove all the rhyolite above it uh sorry it's uh phyllite above it but we've got a pretty decent size zinc deposit i mean i'm right here where i thought the center was but I found a very large deposit over here with the prospector's pick. There's more over here. So this might be a huge deposit of zinc, which is a very good thing that will get us through a lot of the game. But I just spent the night collecting zinc. We don't have a ton, but we definitely have enough to make everything we need for create. And I'm probably going to build a bridge either going that way or that way. So I can get across here nice and easy instead of having to swim all the time. Cooking up some andesite alloy to finish up the greenhouse. Not greenhouse. 
the mill. And I figure now's a good time to show you how the bellows works. So as soon as this melts, and I don't need the bellows to melt this, obviously, but I'm working with the forge. Might as well, right? So let those melt. Run over here. That gives us the bellows. We want to place it facing the opposite direction of which we want the point. So this is the point. I'm sorry. This is the side that has to face into the forge. Let me click it. First of all, it says whoosh at the top of the screen. But now the forge will get hotter at the expense of the charcoal. The charcoal will burn quicker. But since the temperature is hotter, that means everything in the forge will heat up quicker. And so that's the bellows. That's that's important, obviously. Neat little trick is now we have the bellows. We can start collecting hematite and grinding it up into the iron dust or the hematite dust. And then we can cast it in the cast iron. Cast iron is almost useless. Uh, there's one or two from a life items that use cast iron. But the real cool thing is that we can then use that cast iron in the bloomery, which we are still a bit away from. I need to collect a lot of bronze to make a bloomery. But we can toss the cast iron into the bloomery instead of iron dust. And it's much more efficient because we need you need one charcoal per item you add to the to the bloomery. So if we're doing uh, dust, of course, we're going to need. Well, OK, if we're using dust, just dust, you need 20 bits to make one ingot. There are these pellets, which you need five per ingot. And if you combine four of these together, you get a per kit. I know I keep wanting to say brisket when I see it. Um, and those are worth, you know, eight tenths of an ingot. So you toss in six of those. No, five would give you four ingots. So you toss in five, you would need five charcoal to get four. If you make full cast iron ingots, you need one charcoal per ingot. If you make double ingots, like what we got over here, then you get two ingots for one charcoal. And if you make a plate, a plate is four ingots. So you get four ingots for one charcoal. Actually, now that I think about it, I should turn these into pellets. So I can toss them all in together. Since that's going to take a minute, let's show you what I've done so far. We got a nice little pathway down. I mean, it's not perfect. And like I said, I want to continue the wall over there. We got it down here. We've got a bit of stuff already planted. Tomato plants, when you put them down, you have to click a stick onto the plant to give it a um, support to grow on. Got potatoes and carrots down here. Right, there was dust in the river, but it looks like it disappeared without making pollution. So that's a good thing. What we're going to do is we're going to pull a shaft off of the water wheel, come into the building down here. It's going to come in and then we're going to come up from the bottom up to here with the cog wheel being at the top next to our mill. And then I'm going to go and well make sure the mill is to the side or something. And I'm going to dig. I did not mean to fall. I'm going to dig down and we're going to have a trench down here. It's going to go fairly deep and I'm going to probably need to make some more mud mud walls to uh to give it some place to go. Uh, I mean, to uh, support the walls as it goes further down. So yeah, so then all the dust will collect down at the bottom of that hole that I'm going to dig. And I'm going to need to include a ladder so I can get down there. But that's going to be our mill here. And I'm going to need to get a lot more limestone. The only way I'm getting limestone right now are those sitters. So I'm going to need to make a few more of those. And this building is going to take a while to build, but we can at least get it usable now. But I'll worry about finishing up, setting all that up once I have all of our shafts made, because I need to finish melting the andesite, make the andesite alloy. I got to go make a couple more shafts. Um, ash wood. I'm making 12, so that's eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's 12. OK, I'm making 12 of them, so 
need 12 shafts for 12 andesite alloy. And then I'll bring it back in so we can actually build the little contraption I'm doing. Uh, another quick tip that I want to point out is once you have the bellows, you can fire clay molds, clay anything in the charcoal forge. It needs to hit white hot, which is all the way up here. As soon as it does. There we go. We now have ingot molds and just like I pointed out last time, we can go over to my barrel here, take these, which are molten, toss them in. Now they're solid. So that's how you can quickly cool down anything so that you can uh, pull an ingot out if it's a mold or if it's an item you're making and how you can fire ingot molds in the charcoal forge once you have a bellows. Yeah, getting the bellows really makes life a lot easier. But now you can start doing this. And now we can go work on our uh, windmill a bit more. Not windmill, or water mill. I'm a bit away from making a windmill. Of course, I do like windmills better than water mills, but you make do with what you have. Where did the cog go? I think the cog is on top of the... Yes, it was. And then we can put that there. I guess I made more shafts than I needed. Eh, they're used often enough. It's not like it's going to be a problem having extra. We then put our mill here. And then swap these four spots out. Well, mm, if I had a chute, it would drop into a chest. I don't think I don't remember if a hopper can pull out. Anyway, we can uh, eventually we'll have a chute and a chest down here. So anything we put in will go right down. And the rest of these will be trapdoors leading down into a pit that I still have to dig. I do have two trapdoors I can grab just to show you what we're going to do. I got to make up a bit a bit more mud for the walls. Or at least of the uh, the trench. Put them there. And now when this produces dust, the dust will fall onto the trapdoors and fall below. So next I got dig down here. I my uh, my shovel broke. It was my casted shovel, so I'm going to need to make, go forge me a new shovel. But yeah, we'll dig down here and make a nice place. And I mean, this is a large area for just a trench, so I can put more stuff down here. I just don't know what. Considering this is my only source of power at the moment. Or create power, at least. Um, We can probably find something else to do in here. And we can always create more water wheels. Attach them because we make a large water wheel and have that provide extra stress units to spin all of our crate stuff. So now I still got some more zinc I'm working with, uh, grinding down and whatnot. So let's just grab this and toss it in there and we can let it run. And here's the problem listening to other Minecrafters while playing. Sometimes zombies come out of nowhere. I, I move my axe out of my tool slots there just so I can make sure I can use it properly. Ah, well, no zombie virus today at least. So I just store that there for the time being. Check my six, make sure I'm not going to be snuck up on any more zombies. I have no idea where that guy came from. He should not have been able to spawn. Anyway. Uh, oh, I found a horse. 
Let's see, can I feed him yet? Nah, not yet. But if you look at his stats there, jump height of three, speed of 19, and it becomes adult in 17 days. If I feed him every day, which I will hopefully be able to, uh, let's see, I can get him to, I should be able to max out his familiarity. So it'll be a hundred percent. The dust has piled up a little bit down here. Uh, the server literally just finished backing up. So if I wanted to test something really stupid, now would be the time. But I don't want to die. But yeah, this this is pollution. Oh, this is dust pollution. It does gather. As we dig deeper, it will fall. But if you stand in it long enough, you get blindness. That's a pretty neat little trick. Uh, if I wanted to clean this up quickly, I could probably go grab a bit of dirt and put it down here and have the, oh, like that, that should turn into, once the blindness goes away, that should turn into a path block and then the course and then gravel. But yeah, this is, this is. <laughs> This is why you need trap doors and ventilation, because if this gathered next to the uh, grindstone up here, it explode. I really want to walk into there for lit torch to see what would happen. I mean, I know what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to go kaboom. And I'd go kaboom with it. And it's a good thing I've got the chunks claimed. But I would still lose stuff. Um, hmm. okay, let's do this. Let's dump everything except for one torch and then we'll see about blowing ourselves up. Okay, we've got nothing except for the five levels on us, which we don't need. No, well, we don't need yet. Ow, I punched a rock. Okay, I was under the impression that that would cause explosions. And there is a lack of a kaboom. There's supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. Maybe it's because I claimed the chunk. Okay, well, that's good to know at least. Still need to dig all the way down. And, uh, yep, leave a trench down there. So I'll get to doing that. We need to fish today. I made the fishing rod last episode and I never went over fishing and fishing is a little different. Okay, so first off, fishing rods need bait. You see, I've got a jute seed on here. The way you add bait is you grab something like a seed, like this jute seed, and you will right click it onto the, um, the rods. So I'm going to keep an extra one on me so that if we lose the bait, We've got another one I can show you with. What we need to do is go down to the water a bit. Now, remember, this is flowing water. So I go, if I cast, the bobber will head downstream. But now where my XP bar was, there is now a another bar. It's like a stress bar. We are waiting for an actual fish from the river just like that to bite. Anyway, get back here. And he got away. What if I have my knife in my offhand? Will I be able to smack him with the knife? That's one way to do it. And uh, there we go. Now we call a fish. <laughs> if you pull too fast. Uh, let's wait for another one to bite and I will show that. As you know, there's no bubble trails leading up like there is in vanilla. So if you pull in too fast. The fish 
breaks its breaks its connection to you and uh, you lose the bait. So that's why we need a second bait. So I could just put it right back on and having the knife in my offhand was no use. But there we go. That's how we fish in from a lot, not from a life. And that's how we fish into from a craft. So uh, let's just leave the fishing roll rod over here for now. And it's a good source of protein because unlike other animals, your, your goats, your horses, sheep, none of them respawn into a firmacraft. Fish though, infinitely respawn. And also worth noting the burrows that I have around here, like uh, this one here, that will respawn so long as you don't kill all the animals that were in it. So this has tortoises and you've definitely seen them wandering around my base. As long as I don't kill the last tortoise, they will respawn. It might just take a while. Oh, there we go. There's one of the tortoises. You shift click, you can actually pick up the tortoise. So eventually I'm going to go around and collect all the different animals and have a, uh, not quite a petting zoo, but you know, a zoo. All right. How about we finish off this episode with a little bit of rapid fire crafting three lumber and three cloth. Well, this is still cloth will give us a bed so we can finally sleep through the night. If we do, I already forgot what the recipe was. Ah, it was six. Just like that. And that gives us composters and I'll show you those in a minute. And then if we go to. Oh, I need to make a bone needle quickly, don't I? All right, toss that in there. Along with that, we can make ourselves a silk shirt, which we can wear, which will give us a bit more insulation. We need to go to our curios. There we go. And we can hide by clicking that little button there. But that will keep us a bit cooler. With it on, we're at 28. With it off, we're at 29. So that'll keep our temperature down a little bit, but it will take wear and tear as we wear it. If we go in here, we now have six buckets of goat's milk. If we toss in one rennet per two buckets, so we need to toss in three, we can seal that and it will curdle. That will take four minutes. While that is curdling, we can go over here. Two silk cloth next to each other will make cheesecloth. We need that to go in with the curdled milk to turn it into milk curds which we can then turn into cheese. Next episode, we'll take the leather that we've made. I I've tanned up two of the rabbit hides. That's a third rabbit hide when it's done. We can oil it, turn it into leather, and then we'll make the leather flask, the water flask. And then we don't have to worry about carrying a ceramic jug on us, which will break. We can dump that there. Grab our rotted fruit and we take our composters. So these composters work a bit different than the Minecraft vanilla composters, which, you know, is par for the course with everything to have firmacraft. It works a bit different. It has green and brown items. Each takes 16. So fruit are worth four. Flowers are worth one. Uh, fruit is, of course, green. Flowers, I think, are also green. Uh, veggies, I think, are green. So how do we get brown? Well, uh, let's put this away. And let's pull out the book. And look at the composter. Because it will tell us. Flowers are green. Grains are green. Fruits and veggies are green. Vines are brown, wood ash and jute, hummus, melons, pumpkins. So you grow a pumpkin farm, you can toss the pumpkins in as brown. What I like to do personally is if I can remember where it is, I think it's. Yeah, this over here, so I'm going to run over there, grab some, and I'll show you what it is in a moment. Oh, by the way, one of my favorite features of Terraformer Craft. Shift 
right click you can stack ingots oh i don't even need to go that far okay this stuff is our our undo however i'm supposed to actually pronounce that try to break as high as you can because every one that you break will give you a piece back and then this stuff grows fast but each one gives you one or two brown i forget so we're going to take a whole bunch back we're going to make a large field of them and that will provide for our composters in the future so let's see all right arun uh these are worth one brown a piece once you fill it with 16 of each it will start a 10 day timer at the end of the 10 day timer you will get one compost from it or uh, well one fertilizer from it and that fertilizer is worth here we go you get compost which is worth 40 20 40. so that's pretty good for fertilizing but of course you only get one per composter per 10 days so you really you're really gonna want a lot of composters running to get started as i said we're going to set up just a bunch of these up here and uh, these grow very fast they grow like weeds they will shoot straight up and then for every one you harvest you get one piece so by doing 15 of these I can get uh, 15, 15 to 30 a day. Depends on how, depends on how often I harvest them, you know? But then we just toss them in here and get the compost, compost going, compost. And uh, our dust is collecting nicely in here. And you can actually get some of the dust to drop. Uh, but I wasn't able to pick it up when I got the drop. Oh, there. Mm, it went away right away. But if you want to clean up your dust, you can rig up something that will drop. I can't, I can't get down the ladder. All right, well, this one hasn't degraded, so that's cool. Now it has. Oh, well. Um, so yeah, that's how you can clean up your dust once it's uh, gathered too much down here. And uh, you can move it. Use it for demolitions, maybe. But at the very least, you could clean up your your area so you don't have to worry about explosions or pollution. So now we got our bed. Let's go put it down inside our little hut for now. Save our spawn point. I mean, set our spawn point. And sleep through the night. I think that's a good place to leave it for today. We've covered fishing. We've gotten our millstone running and not polluting and exploding everything so you know that's a bonus we've even covered making leather our bellows and a few little bits and bobs here and there so thank you for joining me today i hope you've had a wonderful day and i'll see you next time later hello there and welcome back to terra from a craft hard rock i hope you're having a wonderful day we are about to craft something extremely useful uh before we do though I have these primitive glass panes. These are needed for a lot of things, including the greenhouse walls from for my life. And the way you make them is you have to melt sand in your forge and cast them into ingot molds. And you get one pane per ingot mold and you get one. Do I have a piece of sand here? Yes, you get 100 millibuckets of glass per sand block. So that's one glass pane per sand. What we need to do is we need to do this and make two backpack tanks. We're going to do this with three silk to make a sleeping bag. Now we can use this to sleep while out in the wild or whatever, but we're going, but we need it as part of the backpack. We go here. We put that there, that there, those there leather all around it and then a chest in the center we make that a standard traveler's backpack we open up our inventory go to the screen with the crafting grid click on the little 
icon up here, we open up our curio slots and we can put the backpack in our backpack slot. Same way if you are putting a barrel on your back or a small, oh, large vessel. And by pressing K, we can open up our backpack. This backpack has four buckets worth of water space. And I noticed while you can fill them with a wooden bucket, you cannot withdraw with the wooden bucket, but you can withdraw with a flask. I am not sure if I can withdraw with a jug. Let's try. Yes, you can. So what I'm going to do is grab this. We're gonna grab one bucket of boiled water, toss it into our backpack. And now while we're out exploring, we can refill our jug from our backpack and, there, and thereby have water with us as we travel. It also has a crafting grid over here, but it doesn't need to be a crafting grid. You can remove it and just have it as extra inventory space. So that's going to be incredibly useful for us as we go out exploring. Since I need to go out and find Kaolin... I always say it wrong. Kaolinite, which can only be found in sedimentary rocks, shale, claystone, limestone, conglomerate, dolomite, chert, and chalk. None of which is anywhere near us. So we have to go explore a lot to find that. And we need to find some graphite, which does spawn in schist, which is, again, way to the north, all the way up here. So we're going to have to go exploring quite a bit to find what we're looking for. And hopefully we will find it. But what I've done is I have made a hopper for up here so I can load up stuff into the millstone. I have the millstone area chuck loaded. Do that by control. Nope. Shift right clicking. Sorry, shift left click. Force loads it. Shift right click unforce loads it. So now our millstone is force loaded. Uh, I did not do that right. So now we can place the hopper on here and it will cycle through and dump everything in so we can automate this process a little bit. And since it's force loaded, it will run while we're gone. As a side note, this does absolutely explode, but it needs to reach a certain I'm trying to think of the word, a certain threshold of dust. So we don't have enough dust now for it to explode, but I'll leave this torch lit down here. Eventually there will be enough and it will explode. And now that I have finished doing that, I think it's time we go out exploring. I don't yet have an animal I can ride, but if I leave now, I won't be able to get this horse up to full familiarity before it grows up. So that's a bit of a downside, but well, we'll make do. Oh wait, I should, I have a lead, don't I? I should bring that with me just in case I find an animal I want to bring back. We're off. We need to find graphite, kaolinite. We need to find sand. I need, to, I want to find a, that's weird. Oh, okay. Um, I've been playing on the server and it uh, looks like for some reason I'm seeing the different players of the server on my world map. This is my single player world, by the way. Uh, sorry, I need to find sand. I need to find a badlands so I can get some sandstone because I found red, white, and orange sandstone would probably go really well for what I want to build over here. So that's what I'm going to be going looking for. And there was something else and I've completely forgotten what it is. So we're not going to worry about it for now. I'll, I'll remember as I explore. Well, I'm finally back in game. No thanks to uh, Microsoft servers being down for a long time. But look what I found. Kaolinite or Kaolinite or however I say it. This is this is one of the two things we're looking for. Uh, now I just got to figure out roughly where the heart of this is without finding any animals over here who want to eat me. And there's a kid. Oh, this is perfect. Look at that. 
<laughs> oh, this is so nice. Okay, one block will give me one kaolinite, and each of these will grind down into five. You need four per fire clay. We need five fire clay for our crucible. We're going to need a lot of fire clay for our blast fire furnace, which we don't have yet, but we might as well collect extra fire clay, uh, kaolinite now, so we don't have to worry about it later. Uh, we also, we're going to want two mold tables, these from casting with channels, and those take kaolinite, so we need five per mold channel. We're going to want the channels, takes five to make four, so right there, that's 20 fire clay and we're going to want extra. Like I said, we're going to want to make fire clay bricks in the future. Um, there's some other stuff around there I can make with fire clay. I can make fire clay ingots, but if we use the mold, the channels, the molds won't break in the channels. Although I may have found a bug where if you break the channel with a mold in it, the mold gets deleted. So yeah, don't do that. And then we're going to need fire clay bricks to make the fire bricks to make the but make a lot of stuff. This is a big deposit, which is very good. So let's grab, I'm going to grab an entire stack, I think. Ooh, there's borax here too. What can I use borax for? Oh, borax is flux. Okay, that's good to know. Right, so I'm going to grab a stack of this and then I'm going to keep looking for graphite. We're going to need a lot of that too. Good. Probably at least a whole stack. And I'm saying 64 stack, not 32 stack. I'm going to show you a trick that is insanely useful. You see all these marks on my map? Well, those are all resource deposits. Only I haven't actually gone to all of them. You see on the map, you can see, if you zoom in, different colors. And if you highlight over them, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, and I'll zoom in so you can actually see what it says, it tells you what the item is on the ground. Here we have loose limestone rock. These little orange things, those are pumpkins. This over here, well, that's a burrows. That right there, that's graphite. So now we found our graphite. It's uh, just a little ways away from me over that way. We can go grab it and uh, yeah, we, uh, well, we're going to have to go back home so we could dump off our inventory since our inventory is full now. But then once we do that, we can come back out. Grab a whole ton of bismuthinite. And sorry for the choppiness. Uh, the further you explore in Terraformacraft, the more choppy the world gets. When we go back and I restart the game, it will be much better. Oh, there's a cow out here. Okay, this looks like a fairly central location for all the graphite. So let's try this again. And ladders this time. There we go. Found the graphite. So just like the... Kale, kale, just like my inability to speak, uh, we're going to want to collect about a stack's worth of this. So we're going to be dumping... Pretty much everything I don't think I really need to bring home with me. But we're going to try. Yep. We're going to try to collect uh, 64 of these. And then, like I said, we can get started on some fun stuff. All right. So I want to put a. Well, I'm going to need to put some supports in here. And we don't want anything crashing down on us. So we're going to put two there we're going to clear a spot here put two down there now we can't access the ladder anymore but now we can expand out uh two blocks this way and then two blocks that way move one move this supports over that way put some supports this way and then we'll have created a safety box down here that we can start mining in. And now because we have the supports here and there, we can make ourselves some quartzite cobble quickly. Stack it right here. It won't collapse because of the supports. Put our ladders on it and go up, chop down some more wood and then get more supports. 
Well, we're finally home and I have to literally go right back out to get the bismithonite we left behind because we were out of inventory space. But before that, let's craft up a couple new storage drawers. Oh, uh, four two by two storage drawers to be exact. And <laughs> I do not want to put the storage drawers in the storage drawer. There we go. So that gives us plenty of storage room. We can put our graphite in. And I already put one stack of graphite and one stack of kaolin kaolite into our millstone. So that's grinding down now. And while we're doing that, we can start putting some of our other stuff. Like, uh, let's put the charcoal in there. And these will all be moved because right now, well, it's not yet tornado season. Oh, wow. There's a lot of pollution up there, isn't there? I did not realize just how much pollution was over there. What was I going to say? Right. We're not quite in tornado season, but when we are, this, uh, all this can be torn away. So we're just going to be doing this for now for temporarily. When we get the house started, we'll set up a storage room and then we'll have a proper storage room. That's a little bit away. Now we only have four pellets of bismithonite. And uh, that's a problem because we need, I want, should I say, to use bith, uh, bismuth bronze to make our bloomery door. The bloomery door takes eight double sheets, which is four ingots per sheet. That's 32 ingots. Which is why we went and got the kaolinolite so we can make fire clay and have a little bit of an easier time dealing with all that. Also got a ton of uh, of ore that can be crushed down into iron. I could double this so that's 3.2, that's 3.2, that's 3.2, 3, 6, 9, 12. Oh, that's we're going to be a little bit short from being able to make a anvil, I think. But there's a little bit of iron right over there we can go collect. And then we can make an iron anvil as soon as we have the bloomery door set up. We do have to still build the bloomery. Uh, so, you know, one thing at a time. Let's go check on the grindstone. See how much is done. Oh, I just remembered. We can't grind down the graphite yet. Kaolinite that we just grind straight down. The graphite has to be done like ores. So we have to crush it with a hammer, wash it in a sluice, cr uh, grind it in the millstone, and then wash it again. Well, that means I'm going to have to step away while this runs. Having these close together makes it so much easier. And once we get more into Create and we can actually build a fan, washing becomes much faster. Uh, even more faster. And I made a mistake last episode. You need to have the composters with a space apart. Otherwise, they take longer. And in this pack, at least, they take four days. So in four days, I will now have my first set of compost. Which we can apply to our farms if we wanted to. Or we could just save them up for later. I got a little too close to the dust. I, I'm waiting for the next day so I can finish feeding my donkey so they'll be, uh, its familiarity won't drop. And I was just exploring and I'm like, hmm, I wonder how much dust is down here. Well, enough to make it explode. Once it hits a critical mass, it will explode. And, uh, apparently standing right here when there's dust below you is enough to meet critical mass. But our graphite's almost done. Well, with this phase and then we have to wash it again and then we can make our ki um, not kiln and then we can make our crucible and all the stuff I want to make with it yeah I think we're gonna be good on bismuth for a while with all this and with this mine we can always come back to so we're gonna head back we need to start processing all this bismuth down into usable form and we will make our crucible and casting channels. And then maybe, depending on how long it takes, also make 
uh, Iron Anvil today. We'll see. All right, I've spent a long time processing everything down. So let's make the fire clay and then the bloomery door. That gets us 16 fire clay. We need a bit more than that. I wanted 20. There we go. And now, same as before. That gives us our crucible. That's one mold or table mold. That's a second. Right. Okay. Let's see if I could remember this one. There we go. And because we have the bellows, we can fire all these clay items now. Nice and easy. Get that done. Toss those back in. Pull those out. And we can actually pull these out too. Because they're not going to be really necessary. We're not going to be using these slots for anything other than firing clay in the future really. As soon as the crucible is done. We can toss it right there. And now life just became infinitely easier. This isn't exactly a pretty setup, but it'll make do for now. None of these setups are, are permanent. So <laughs> don't worry about it too much. Now, I threw everything in my backpack. Not everything. We're going to take the copper anvil that we made last time. Copper anvils, of course, anvils take no durability damage. So this is still worth the full 14 ingots of copper. We can toss that into here along with all well, the rest of that copper and the zinc and then the bismuthinite. Melt it all down, alloy it into bronze, uh, bismuth bronze, and cast it in these, uh, cast them into the table molds. We can then weld them together. I'm going to need to make more flux, I just realized. Weld them together, make the double doors. Not double doors, just make the doors. How's this doing? Okay, so some of the zinc and some of the copper is melted. We're going to toss the more zinc in. This anvil is going to take a while because, well, as I've mentioned before, items heat up based on how much metal is in them. This is 14 ingots worth of metal. So it takes, well, more than 14 times as long to heat up as one of these briquettes. And because it's a bismuth, they melt almost instantly. Now, right now it says unknown alloy. This is the cool thing about the crucible. It shows you or what metals are in the crucible and their percentages. You can tweak how much is in it until you get the right ratio and can turn it from an unknown alloy into a proper alloy. So once the anvil is done melting, it will be bismuth bronze. I do have to keep feeding this. And what I could do is if I use the bellows, the temperature will go up, which will speed up the process a bit. It speeds up the process a lot more for different items. For the anvil, it's not going to speed up nearly as much because it is so big. <laughs> I set up an automated, automated explosion system over here for the dust. And it's very simple. I have a torch right there. I moved it from over here. I put it right there. So when this fills up with just enough dust, it will hit the torch, ignite, and blow up all the dust in here. And uh, that's how we automate getting rid of dust. In the meantime, I have prepared a few bricks because we're going to need bricks to make the blast front bellows. I always want to say blast furnace. So we need an area kind of like this. And 
And then I always, well, I got that there. I think, I don't think we need anything on the back. I think these are really just the important bits. Of course, we need to get to the top. So we're going to want to make a few ladders quickly. Because you need to throw the ingots into there, or at least the items you want to turn into iron into there. And when it snows, not that we have to worry about snow right now, snow can mess up your bloomery. If you got the bloomery running and snow accumulates inside, it will stop the bloomery. So what you could do is put a trap door, the block above. So do I have an extra trap door I can show you with? I do not, but we can make pretend. If we put a trap door where this block is, so bottom side of so bottom side of this block, that will one protect any snow or debris from falling inside the bloomery, but also allow pollution to exit and the bloomery will count as being complete. So as soon as this is done and it's getting closer, but it's still going to be a little, little bit. We'll cast out everything, forge them together, weld them together, and then make our door and then make some iron because I have almost everything I need to make 16 ingots of iron. And this is just about done. And we'll see the unknown convert straight over to Bismuth bronze. So now that we have this full of bronze, we can click this with the right click button and it will start to fill the ingot molds with the alloy and it will fill each mold with 100. So we had 3.2. It is now down to three buckets. These take a moment when they cool. We can then weld them together. We could pull the ingot mold out by shift right clicking onto the mold table and then remove the ingot. But as a chance of breaking if we do that, if we just let them cool in the table, we can withdraw them with, without removing the mold, which means the mold won't break. Additionally, when we remove them straight from the mold like this, they will remove at max temperature, which means we can do this real quick. Oh, uh, you want to click that so it starts casting again. And then we want to do any hit, any hit, any hit. All right, that took longer than I liked. So now we have our first Bithmus bronze sheet. We need to wait for these two to finish up, pull them out, do the same thing, and then heat them back up because one of these is going to be too cold. Weld them together again. And that's going to be the first of the eight double sheets that we need to make the bloomery door. You can automate this in the future by putting a hopper under each of these mold tables. I'm, I'm stuck. Oh. I yep, there we go. I accidentally pulled out the uh, accidentally pulled out the mold. Now these have cooled down just a little bit, toss them back in there. Pull that back out. And weld. Toss them both on. Weld it. That's a double plate. And we can just stick it in here for now. And we're just going to keep repeating this. As I was saying, you can stick a hopper under these. And when they cool, the hopper will pull them out. So you can automate pulling out ingots or whatever you're casting if you don't need to heat them right up right away. Since we are going straight into making the double sheets and whatnot, there's no point in pulling them out automatically. All right, so we'll be back when I have all eight of these done. 
All right. And these are the last two of this. Toss that one in here just to heat it back up. That's our bloomery door. Place it right there. And now we have a bloomery. Now then, next, I want to make six of these. That's five. That's six. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, so we're going to find something out in a moment. We have two different types of iron here. We have limonite and hematite. I don't know if they stack. Now, this is the least efficient way to do this. We're going to want 20 charcoal. Toss that all in. And I think it worked. Okay, awesome. That worked. So that will make 16 ingots of iron. We got to hold down our fire starter. Once we get a flint and steel, it'll be much easier. All right, so this will produce 16 raw iron bloom. We then work the raw iron bloom on our anvil into refined bloom and then wrought iron. We then have to combine 14 of those ingots, ingots together to make our iron anvil. We can then get rid of this anvil. And then we can use the last two ingots to make a saw. Because this mechanical saw from Create makes life infinitely easier. The saw, we have to make a gearbox. Gearbox requires an andesite casing on wood and then a cog. Yeah, a, a gear, small gear placed on the andesite casing turn into a gearbox. And then we apply the saw blade, which we make with a double raw iron ingot to that. That turns into the mechanical saw. We could then either hook it up over there to the windmill or I can make a crank and just do it individually but then we'll be able to turn one log instead of into two supports on the chopping block we could turn it into three and then instead of turning one support into two planks we can turn the one support into ten planks we're going to reduce the amount of lumber we need substantially with this next upgrade so once this is done We'll move on to the anvil, making the saw, and then we'll see how much time we have left. Everything's exploding around me. That was my automated exploder again. It's going off like every 10 minutes. And it's efficient. I don't have to worry about dust collecting in here anymore. And because we have all the chunks claimed, I don't have to worry about any of my stuff breaking also. And side note, andesoit, andesoit. Andesite stones can be crushed into andesite rock powder, which can be washed and give you a 3% chance of getting copper, 1% chance of getting it's zinc, right? Valerite, zinc, yep. Less than 1% chance of gold and less than 1% chance of silver. So since this is chunk loaded and I have nothing else to process at the moment, I'm just gonna be processing andesite rocks. Yeah, get a little extra powder and whatnot so I don't waste uptime. And any moment now. Bloomer is complete. Then you're left with this raw iron bloom block. Every time you break it, you get one raw bloom. You can toss two on the anvil. Doesn't really matter. Just gotta make sure your anvil, your hammer is in your correct hand. And they cool down, so we're going to toss those in there. This one, because it's doubling it already, is ready to go in there. But the rest of these have 
already cooled down to the point where we're going to have to be tossing them into the crucible to keep them hot so we can work them. So I'm just going to mine all the rest of them. Yep, can't even work these anymore. So we're going to relight the crucible and now the crucible, if we don't use the bellows, will not get hot enough to melt the iron. So we can kind of forget about them. Just put them on the back burner of our mind and just continue working two at a time. Like I said, we want to get enough to make our iron anvil because once we have the iron anvil, we can make iron tools. I have made an andesite casing. I have just about everything here for the crank. So let's make the crank. Oh, you know what? I think I need it to be a cog. Yes, that's the hand crank. And then we should be able to just click this on. That makes it a gearbox. All right. And so we can click the saw onto this once the gearbox is done. And I mean, once the saw is done and have a saw. And that's the last of the iron. And then we can pull these out. Turn that off. Double ingot, saw blade, third to last, second to last, both need to be draws, bend last. No, that's not good enough. Draw, draw, bend. There we go. That's a saw blade. Stick that in our crafting grid to turn it into the other version of a saw blade. Click it on. Now we have a mechanical saw. We can pick that up. Grab our crank. That's off. Good. Oh, let's grab some lumber so you can actually see what's going on. Let's grab one log. I'm going to do it over here. So any dust goes down there. So we can put the crank on there. Toss the log up there start cranking we get three supports and two sawdust we throw the supports back up there and crank again each time through we'll do one support does produce dust that would go down there now we have an additional 30 lumber as opposed to the Two, sorry, four lumber we would normally get from one log. And we've got a bunch of sawdust. The sawdust can be turned into a die base, can be used as flooring, fiberboard, can be heated into wood ash, which is a fertilizer, can be used to make paper mulch, uh, paper pulp, which is used to make paper. Since the other way you make paper is papyrus and getting your hands on papyrus will require traveling all the way down to the uh, jungle area. Before we finish up for today's episode, let's cover two more important topics. We got some more leather. So let's turn these into leather sheets. We need one set of leather sheets. We need to turn two of those into leather strips. We're going to need more than two leather strips. Which means we need to make a little more leather sheets. And so if we combine two leather sheets with four leather strips and four string, we can make two leather flask sides. We can then go over here, put our two leather flask sides in a bladder, two string and our knife. And now we have our leather flask. The leather flask will hold five drinks worth of water or any fluid for that matter. I can grab five drinks worth of beer or whiskey, which by the way, we're making both whiskey and beer. That timer reset. We now have a water flask, which has has 100 durability. So we can take 100 drinks from it before it becomes broken. 
and when it becomes broken, we can repair it with a bladder. Broken plus bladder equals unbroken. So this is much better. It gets us a lot more fluid and we can actually fill and remove water from our backpack using the flask. So we can travel with water on us, get a lot more drinks than just the one jug, and we don't have to worry about the jug breaking on us randomly while drinking. Now, if you notice my backpack, we have aqueducts. Make a few of these. In 1.18's Terraformer Craft, these can only transfer water um, horizontally. Now, that's not to say in 1.20 they can transport any other way, but in 1.20, Terraformer Craft natively will have a pump so you can pump water up and then use the aqueduct. What we can do is do something like this. This will fill with water. It will carry the source block. So, so if we remove this block here, that will become a source block or at least a temporary source block. Because if we remove, let's remove this one. The water dries up and so does that. So we can use aqueducts to transfer water and that will hydrate the soil as we go. Um, let's put this one back. You see this is now up to 98% hydration, which means that you can water your crops further away from a water source by transferring the water using an aqueduct because you cannot move water sources. Now, we do have quite a few different pumps available in this mod pack, such as the Create Mechanical Pump, which is actually not that hard to make. And we could then pump water up from there to, say, up here and have it dump into an aqueduct and water all of our crops up here. Right now, what I could do is if I found a water source above ground, I could transfer the water across to my base. The problem is water like the river over there and the ocean back there only generate at the same Y level. I think it's Y72. So you will not find water up on a mountain that you can transfer down, at least not drinkable water. You can find spring water in a mountain and transfer the spring water down, but you can't drink spring water. You can, of course, sit in the spring water to warm up and to heal yourself. But yeah, you can't drink it. And I don't think it really works for watering crops either. So that's kind of a moot point. But this is how you make aqueducts. You can chain them together. You can put one lower. And provided you do it correctly. Unlike what I did here. The water will dump down. So you can actually lower the level at which the water is at. Like I said, useful for watering crops or providing water to your greenhouse when you eventually get a greenhouse set up. And if you have a pump, then you could bring the water up. But otherwise, you have to do everything at sea level. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, we have finally reached the Iron Age. We can start making iron tools in the future. But until then... Thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Later.